Hello. Hello, hello. How's it going? It's going all right. How are you doing? Um, pretty good. Uh, a little tired from all the insanity this week, but I think things are getting in control. Things are coming back together. Um, looks like it must be um, a little cold in your apartment because you got your sweater on and oh, stuff. My cardigan thing? Yeah. You look like you got a like a new wave thing going on with your shirt over there. Oh, this black and white thing? Yeah. 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 Well, I was, I mean, it's an old new wave thing because I, I, I was a new waver in the, do you know what new wave is? I mean. More or less. Yeah. Yeah. So they, the part of the new wave thing was to wear like black and white shirts and black and white clothing and, uh, right. And, you know, I like the cure and bands like that. And, um, anyway, so I got this when I was in Berlin in a thrift store for three euros. So, Pretty good deal. You're bringing it back. Yeah. Bringing it back and on a, on a COVID budget. So there you go. Nothing better than that. So, um, we have to figure out what we're going to work on today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping that we're going to do some writing because it feels like for the last week we've been pulled back into comments from right. everybody and I'm getting anxious that we're not um, making progress on chapter 10 with the impending technical manuscript review deadline on whenever it is, do you know? September 18th. Yikes. So Coming up fast. Yeah. And yeah, I feel well, like you can jump back into 10. Lots to do. That, yeah. So if we work on something in 10, then we can make progress. But ho I'm hoping magically we can sort of, it doesn't take up this whole session and we can um, go through some of the comments or at least get control of whose comments we need to deal with uh, first so that we're not holding them up. Yeah, sounds good. But we, we start... Um, start with some writing. Start with some writing, because it's been forever. Okay, yeah. so um, let me see. Um, all right, can you see what's going on? I need you to share your screen. Oh. <laughs> that would be good. <sighs> So many things you have to do. Hey, listen to this. They're playing a cure. There you go. They heard yeah. your request. I'm on message. All right. I mean, Charlotte sometimes is pretty lame, but you know, uh, yeah. what can you do? Okay, so we're just gonna hop into 10 and pretend everything's okay. Exactly. <laughs> Live in the land of chapter 10. And we're not, yeah, I, I was thinking, I mean, part of me thinks we need to prepare the questions for the VW interview. We still have more time to do that, though. Okay. And then part of me thinks that we should do the mobility sidebar. Yeah, it's our, our white whale. <laughs> We, it's oh so elusive. We've never found a, a home for it, a place for it, or any desire to write it. I know. I know. Well, it's because the sector got kind of thrashed by COVID, so yeah, it's been kind of depressing. Um, all right, so then we'll just write the... Let's think about where it's going to go. Oh, I haven't looked at this for so long. All right, so we have the kind of what is digital transformation. Oh, so the deal is it's like, what is digital transformation sidebar or not sidebar, but in the copy mobility and then case study on VW? Yeah, alternatively, we can like, have the introduction for VW and then like include the mobility sidebar kind of as part of the 
the intro to VW, talking about like what is mobility in a larger sense, and then bring it back to like what is VW doing really well in that space in the actual body. Hmm. Okay. I don't think All it right. has to be just like dropped in between these like two sections necessarily. Okay. Um, all right, so it's possibly, okay, could be sidebar, could be part of text. I have a feeling it's going to be part of the text. Uh, and let's talk about all the things that it could possibly have. Mm -hmm. Feel free to pipe in, Jessica. <laughs> well, it should reference the fact that we've secretly been talking about mobility all along. <laughs> Wait, we haven't told them what mobility is if they think it's like has to do with like being able to take a wheelchair up a ramp or something. Yeah, accessibility versus mobility. Okay, so how about what is uh, mobility and what is um, mobility as a service? Oh, noise. Okay. So we define it. One paragraph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And then, uh, well, we can list all the things we need to do if we can't remember. Uh, we know that we have the USC mobility class. And Metro Mile. And Metro Mile flashbacks. Um, and obviously VW, but I don't know if we're going to like embed it in the text or how it'll play off of VW because we just talked to them about that in the last chapter. Right. I feel like we could maybe not. Oh, did we? Yeah, I think we do say NVW, the landing page thing. Yeah. I, I think this is going to really, we'll know when we later on, but I think we need to have something that talks about, like, yeah, this book's about mobility. Yeah, all along. You read this whole book and you didn't even realize I was teaching mobility the whole time. Except for Airbnb for wedding. Yeah, besides that. Okay, so, um, and then is this, uh, what is, I mean, I guess I just want to, uh, I'd love to mention somewhere examples. I don't know where this goes. I, I have a feeling this goes here. And well, yeah, then, I think we'll do the definition. We'll let them know. You've already read a bunch of examples, you know, you, you, already know some things about mobility, even if you don't know, you know, and then we can give some additional examples if you want to. Right. Other examples, um, or state of mobility, even though I don't want to get too up in the, um, COVID stuff. Cause it's going to yeah. be, it's going to be dated because, um, I think it's I watched so some of that Trump convention last night, whatever that is, and they said that um, that is that COVID's going to be over in twenty, so twenty twenty one will be a new year. So hopefully, you know, it'll just be a twenty twenty thing, according to uh, Mike Pence. There you go. Looking forward to New Year's then. That's so cool. I know, me too. And I'm not going to be here. I'll be going for Sylvester. So. Uh, other examples, uh, so, and those, okay, let me give, this is actually like a slash, like, um, I, I'd love to touch on City Mapper, mm -hmm. um, because that's going to be, uh, we put that in chapter one as an, ex an awesome example of UX design. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd like one sentence about them. Uh, um, who else? I mean, the one thing that none of the class examples, I think we need to talk about micro mobility and micro mobility. 
Okay. They, they, by the way, I was listening to the new, to, I was listening to NPR and they just threw out the term and, and on the micromobility front, uh, the city is now passing legislation, um, uh, you know, to allow the, you know, companies like Lime, uh, n not be responsible for liability if someone gets hurt on a scooter because Interesting. If, if they did, it was basically, uh, making it. So they couldn't support themselves if they took on that liability. Um, and so they're going to let them waive it. Huh. But what was the more interesting aspect of it was that not only did they use the term mobility on the radio without defining it. But micro mobility. But yeah. So, you know, we need to touch on that. Um, and so I don't know what the four is. I, I think there might be no four, which is fine. No one said there had to be a four. The four could be there's no four. Uh, they're playing like the one I think cock two song that I don't hate. Okay, so uh, um, I feel like the first thing that we could do is as a quick primer is look at the most recent two emails from uh, oh, that mobility newsletter. Yeah. The one that I love. Um, let's see if Sarah wants to, is able to, then, I don't know. Wait, okay. I don't know if what that means. Uh, should we just send her the link and she'll just jump in, uh, Whenever she's ready, yeah. Yeah, how do I do it? I go to participants and say invite and then copy invite link. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that does it. Maybe it'll do it, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think this is just more of her notes. Yuck, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, you have one, two co-motion things. And, uh, I'll just show you this too. Um, Check out these, this car, right? Hmm. Guess what it is? A Volkswagen? A Volkswagen Golf. There you go. It's the <laughs> car that is, um, I, I didn't get the app working in time before I left Berlin and I was bummed. Um, I oh, the ones you said they just like parked outside? Yeah. Like I could just walk outside and like un unlock this car and hop in and it was like dirt cheap because they're desperately trying to onboard people. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Sebastian, I was like, is, is this like part of Volkswagen's new thing? Cause there's still some of their other car sharing cars I see on the roads in Germany. And he's like, this is a totally other company, but we did a deal with them just to, uh, license or uh, uh, you know give them a bunch of their fleet mm -hmm. um but as far as he knew um that their business model was not working because you get a car because uh you take the car and then you park it anywhere and pretty much everywhere in berlin kind yeah. of like la certainly like New York and London, uh, if, if you're going to leave the car overnight and sometimes anywhere in the day for more than an hour, it needs a parking permit or parking to, you know, right. and so the cities, I think he said like what, I can't remember if he said Hamburg, let them do it for a little while and then stopped, but Berlin wasn't cooperating. And so, the cost of just leaving the cars on the street was way more than they could ever make. Yeah, just parking tickets and violations and stuff. 
Yeah, because you can't, that's why like other car rental companies, they have like designated lots that you can pick up and drop off from. That way they have control over the parking situation and they know if there's spots that are open or not. Right. And that's why Nico's idea of letting people be hosts of these cars is a, a solid idea. Mm -hmm. So, but another thing I, I wanted to show you was the, their pricing. Um, so why this is particularly interesting is because it's dirt cheap. Like if you think about that, you could take a car for three days and have up to 400 kilometers, 450 kilometers. You know how many miles that is? That's, I think. Uh, what is it? Like 65 miles is like a hundred kilometers, isn't it? I can't remember. Something like that. Miles. Kilometers. What's 450? Oh, here we go. Yeah, 100 um, miles is, or 100 kilometers is 62 miles. So 279 miles, which uh, you can go visit grandma out in their country house or whatever. I mean, that for 209 euros, that's a crazy deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, or if you're just like, let's go party this weekend in Berlin, no problem. 65 yeah. euros. I mean, that's, you know, you, that's, you, you're breaking even if you took three Ubers. Mm -hmm. Um, and that includes parking includes fuel. So, Oh, wow. It feels to me that they're, they're giving it away right now to try to get people hooked. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and then this other part that's interesting about their model is that you, so let's say you're out at grandma's and you're like, oh, we want to stay here longer and you can just ex extend it. Interesting. And what that, and you can do that with Turo as well, but basically <clears throat> it, 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 it makes it more limited in terms of other people being able to book a car. If like, what if someone, what if they have a limited amount of cars and then someone books the car that I happen to say I just want for one day and they book it let's say I book it for sa Saturday and then someone books it on Sunday but I guess they can't it's not available yeah so, do they offer like in advanced reservations or is it, it like I saw so I saw something about advanced reservations so I can't figure out what's going on like how they could <clears throat> so it just seems to me they're boss leader and there's to, um, you know, experiment uh, and get people engaged. So yeah. there's there's that to keep in mind. Uh, there's an example of uh, short term, very short term. I wouldn't call this car sharing, car rental. Yeah, it's like bringing. It's like the micro mobility, like the scooters and stuff like that, where you just like pick them up and drop them off wherever, but on a car size, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing deal. Um, so then we could look at this one. This, wow, that's loud. I have to keep the music on in the background because I'm insane, but it's not like when I was working in Germany and there was street noise and stuff. Yeah, no saxophonists. Um, All right, so this is about, this is a little scale because we know about what happened. Uber and Lyft stuff, yeah. Let's remember about Uber and Lyft. Uh, let's remember that um, right, this whole thing, I mean that doesn't, that's just a business model thing behind uh, Car. It's not. We can't call it car sharing anyway anymore. What did we call it in chapter one? Do you remember chapter two? Um, some other. Some other phrase for it. I don't remember. I know, I, I've been talked about mobility for so long. I'm like out of it, out of it. Um, move it. Is it 
Mm -hmm. So there's mobility as a service. Remember that it's capital S at the end. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now they're talking about these boats. Tesla talk everywhere. I, I, I was calling Vanguard to move some money around today, and I was confused why my Tesla one piece of stock was at over $2,000. Because mm -hmm. I never bought a, a share of stock over two hundred dollars in my life. Right. And I was so I was like, "What's up with this thing? Why is it say two thousand? I thought that they were splitting it by four into four. And he said they'll be doing that. But yeah, your stock's gone up from two hundred to twenty four hundred wow. one share. And I was like, "Oh man, if I had bought like a hundred, I'd be like a dollar an hour." Yeah. Okay, it looks like um, Corvette EV, Terry Lake's Corvettes, yuck. Uh, hoarding cash, that's about the airlines, dirty diesel, um, diesel. Oh my God, it's not quite diesel gates record. Great, um, fork over, in, oh look, okay, this is relevant, okay. Um, because we're going to be talking about diesel gate. Mm -hmm. So now, what do we have? Mercedes. Yeah, Daimler, the parent company of Mercedes Benz, paying over two billion in settlements. I see. Wow, these Germans are. They they did it. Okay, so. This is very similar to the emissions test rod by pulled off by Volkswagen, though on a smaller scale. We should keep this link. The VW scandal, which was discovered, has cost that automaker thirty-five billion. Oh wow! They sent some guys to prison. Wow. I've heard some of those prisons are very nice and even allow you to go home or, or hang out with your family or something. Okay, so. Okay, so when was this article from? Is this also a recent article? Very recent. No, very old. Okay, 2018. Okay, so let's keep, let's keep going. Um, Canadian uh, seven with include new bus, uh, rapid bus routes, electric. Okay, so something about. Um, oh my God, there's just so much we could talk about, but, uh, this is just about like certain cities that, I, you know, like London that's making it no cars and bike routes everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, John Rassant, he's awesome. He wrote the book that I love about mobility. Um, and Let's see. A smart roadway. So this is autonomy, which I had zero interest in until Terry and I were on the freeway going to visit my mom in Thousand Oaks. And he was like, just try it, mommy. Try the... Self-driving. Yeah. So I put it in self-driving while I was in traffic as opposed to when we were on roads uh, where we'd get scary because it was driving much faster than I drive. Um, yeah. But in traffic, it was awesome because it, it was, you know, you breaking for you and stuff. Yeah, totally. I, I could see that. Freaks me out too much exclusively because it's what I studied as an undergrad, like uh, building autonomous vehicles and like control theory and stuff. And I'm like, if they would let someone like me work on something like that, how could it ever possibly be <laughs> safe? Oh, come yeah, on. But there's a lot of really cool tech involved in it. You're like a scholarship girl. Give me a break. All right. So, Coney AI. Um, Hyundai. All right. Do you see? Oh, there's micro mobility. As 
the leader in micromobility innovation with new startups and form factors. One of the earliest operators, Breeze, is now calling it quits. Yeah, no more bike, sure. Unicycle riding, that's interesting. Hmm. I've, been, I've been riding Terry's scooter. I mean, he's embarrassed to be seen with me when I'm doing it. I think yeah. it's even better than him on it. Probably. Um, but it definitely feels pretty dangerous. Um, and when we, when Uli and I rented them in Dresden, oh my God, on cobblestones. It's too much. I've yet to, I haven't ridden a scooter since I was probably like eight. Seems I mean, scary to me now as an adult. I'm like, as a kid, you're just like, this is amazing. I'm invincible. You're also only like the height of the scooter. But as an adult, you're like, if I fall off that and break my arm, that's right. going to be a pain. <laughs> right. Or hit my, or hit your head. I mean, yeah. that's why they, they have such a hard time getting women on them. Never mind, you know, men who are older than 30. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a nice try. I just don't see, I, I think they're too dangerous. And um, the stupidest thing about Terry's is that you can't lock it anywhere. Like yeah. even if I put a lock <laughs> through the back wheel or I, you, you know, you could only open, turn it on with your phone. It's still like, you could still take the you thing. You could just pick it up. <laughs> and put it in your, literally put it in any car with a hatchback or a seats that go down and take yeah. it. So you have to only take the scooter somewhere, if it's your own property, somewhere where you can bring it inside. Yeah. So stupid. Um, or at least the one he has. Uh, Silk Road Path, uh, uninterrupted. Uh, uh -huh. they, they try to be very clever and snarky with their headlines. Totally rad, that's cute. The largest US e-bike brand, Rad, is classic Hundred million. Oh, e-bikes are just going crazy from the pandemic. Yeah, everybody wants. Well, yeah. they want something new to do. They want a way to get around to other places without having to take public transportation. Right, and you could ride them without a mask, and in some cases, no helmet. Mm -hmm. Or most cases, let's see. I'm not that psyched on them either. Although, again, I haven't tried that one. Let's see. Uh, found it significantly cut. Uh huh. Grown up BMW Falls patents provided serious upgrades to the traditional larger scooter with multiple. What does that look a like? A roof? Is it like a Vespa, but with like a roof on top of it? This is new. A roof, seatbelt, airbags. Interesting. It is like a Vespa with like a roof on top of it. Interesting. Oh, wow. That's that like calling that a scooter. It looks yeah. closer to a bike. You no, know, it looks like uh, the I forgot what they're called when I was in Thailand. Uh, tuk -tuk. Oh, like the, yeah, yeah, the pedicab kind of things. Thanks for this ad that will close in twenty eight seconds. Therefore, I'm not looking at your article anymore. Punish you, okay? Um, let's see. Air pollution is killing honeybees. Uh huh. Bloomberg City Lab, reporting on expanding to add bikes. Gallup, in order uh, careers. Here's some career opportunities. We give you a CTO, a software development engineer in San Diego, or something in Munich, transportation planner. Nothing UXy. No. All right. Do you feel? Can I archive this? We yep. done with it. Okay. Let's look at another one. Uh. Let's see. Um, by the way, if Sarah does jump on, then we have to switch gears to whatever she yeah, wants. Yeah, chapter to nine do. stuff. Yeah, whatever she wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so happy to get these out of my email. Uh, e trucks. Um, what's a TNC? 
I don't know what TNC stands for. Like it seems to be something about like the Ubers and the Lyfts and stuff. I forgot. Transportation Network Company. All right. What's this? EV skateboard maker aims to go public in a reverse merger. Oh yeah, I, I, you know. So all the people that aren't going to get on scooters, I'm sure they're going to hop on an electric skateboard. Yeah. No, thank you. I didn't even ride a skateboard when I was a kid because I was too afraid it would go wrong, let alone hopping on one as an adult that's been electrified. Well, I like skating, but I, but yeah, no way. Seems pretty niche though. Let's take a look at this thing. Why do you call it canoe? Why doesn't he make it a canoe, a rent a canoe and, I, and he could go? Oh, I'd love to rent an electric canoe. We're all changing the way things get done. Like how we redefine uh, collaboration. How we come up with new ways to serve I don't know if we're allowed to show the ad on our TV show. Or maybe we're helping them showing the ad. <laughs> I don't want to help no matter them how things change, with their stupid ad. One thing never will. Just give me the free you content. You rely on the people and the network of at and To help keep your uh, business connected. Devil's tool. A long ad. Okay. It was the, well, let's see. Well, this. Let's bring in the CEO of Canoe, joining us from their facility in Torrance, California, Uli Primes, who is the founder oh, and uh, CEO of Canoe, joining us right there in front of the canoe. Hey, we're going to talk that's about That's a skateboard? Video. That's weird. Canoe, but tell us that's first, a car. How did this deal come together? And when did you guys start talking A model about spaceship canoe? aloft yeah, on yeah, wheels. Looks like a cross right? between a van and a shuttle bus. That is not a skateboard. I'm so confused. Did we? That's the right thing, right? They were saying it's like a skateboard. I'm so confused. I don't understand anything. It just makes me aim to. Okay. What? So that wait, they're a skateboard maker, but then they have a car. Maybe. Uh, there's too many words. But this new public. Okay, whatever. Okay, let's keep going. Um. That guy needs to cut his hair. Okay, hungry for battle. DoorDash is set to go ahead. Okay, so we need to remember like these um, delivery services as well fall under mm -hmm. mobility. If you could add that to the yeah. chapter that we remember uh, the scooters, e skateboards, weird tuk tucks, and uh oh, of course uh what, what was the the new thing that was uh we saw in the last article i can't remember there's so many new things okay uh e-trucks night train That's how, oh i love sleeper cars i'm so into that so nice. You just wake up somewhere. Yep. Look at this. Well, the subway system is just tanking in New York. That's sad. Um, LA rail line heads north to reach. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, the high-speed rail. Mm -hmm. But not hyperloops. Mm -hmm. Just I'm not interested in this autonomy. Okay, micro mobility, free cycle, lightest electric bike. I'm sure it's four thousand dollars. That's how much they were. They were around four thousand euros. Right. Yeah. Looking at them. There's so many stores. Okay, so then safety quiz and a helmet selfie requirement. Interesting. The, the birds are back. Oh, God, I was so excited. To, they were all over the streets and yeah. making a mess of things. I wanted them gone, gone, gone. Cautiously back in expansion mode. 
Uh, despite the high cost of electric bikes, e-boom started years ago before thanks to planning help with subsidies as high as a thousand euros. Okay, that's great. An e-bike lease program, fine. Uh, okay. Roller skating, what? That's cray cray. Should we see if there's a picture? Definitely. Better not have an ad. I mean, skateboards and roller skating, we're going so, this is like the retro show. There are skates, roller skating. I see. I think this is uh, whatever. Her mommy worked at a skating rink. Okay, I, 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 I'm not seeing that anything new and exciting. It's just not a game changer. I think I could be wrong. We thought Dieselgate was over. Okay, so. Um, Did I tell you uh, about these bikes that were all over Berlin that are doing incredibly well? No. They're long-term bike rentals. Oh my God, there's these super cute uh, bikes that are from, that are, they're, are they called Dutch bikes? Or like, they're the ones that you would have in Holland. It's something like Swap. Anyway, they're 19 euros a month and they're really nice and they were everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I was taking pictures of them. And I was like, oh, I want one. Of the, I want to buy one. And then I went to find one and I, I realized I could have rented one. Instead of buying my Polish bike, I could have rented, I think it's called like Swap. Let me see. Swap. Wait. This must be it. Yeah. This is these guys are killing it. And you know that it's one of their bikes because the front tire is blue. Oh, that's fun. So it's cool branding. Yeah. And it is such a deal. Um, you, you own your own free delivery. You decide where and when. It's broken. Just They come fix it within two days and give, and give you a working one. And the price... Um, so of course you just order it and if someone steals it, there's some fees. We'll make sure you get a new one. Oh God. Hello? What is this regarding? Oh, by the way, Jamie, this calls you for this for quality assurance. And I'm calling because we see that you started an application to be part of Wayfair Professional, where you indicated that you make purchases on behalf of... Oh, Wayfair no, I don't need that. In, I don't need that anymore. Thank you very much. I see. Bye. That's okay. We'll make sure that you... All right. So... That sounds pretty cool that they just, like, bring you a bike and they'll swap it with a new one or repair it. Yeah, it's a great deal, and these are super cute bikes, and um, and much so. Like I paid 120 euros for my Polish bike, and I just spent all this money, you know, getting it to have like a lock and then a seat that was comfortable. And I could have just rented one of these for 19 euros a month times three. Yeah, and had a better bike, and then gotten rid of it. It's like leasing a bike, except mm -hmm. it's not committed to. So, like, if Terry comes to Berlin next summer, I'll let him either ride my Polish bike and I'll get one of these or vice versa. He'll, mm -hmm. he'll not like the Polish bike because it has a basket. He'll take one of these. Cool guy bike. I mean, it's such, and I think their business model is solid because, I mean, if you do the math on it, basically, if someone has one, if, let's say they're spending 100 and they're buying them in droves. So let's say they, they were able to get the price down to 120 euros. So mm -hmm. how many rent months do they need to rent it out? Yeah, after renting them at 15 a month. 
or 19 a month. So, you know, within six, after six months or seven months, they're starting to make a profit and people are, I saw them everywhere. People seem very happy with them. I was in, I was shocked. Awesome. You know, you could own. I mean, and it, doesn't, are, it doesn't have the problem of the like instantaneous rentals where the bikes are everywhere, but also nowhere and you can't find it when you need it. And that's a good point. This is like your bike, you're responsible for it. So this swap feats is not going to get in trouble for their bikes being left everywhere because you want to yeah. take care of it because you have to pay if your bike gets stolen. So Exactly. So I don't know if we need to mention them. I don't even know if they have an app. Um, but I think we should mention something about uh, long term. Like lease prop. Or lease. lease I don't programs. even know what you would call this thing. Uh, like, uh, long. What, what do they call them? What do you call this? I mean, they're not going to say what they are here. Yeah, if they do long term bike leases or. Or, I mean, uh, bike rentals or lease bikes. I like how the cities are on order. That's, that makes complete sense. Okay. So, look how amazing. Okay, just do it. You can stop it. 19 euros a month for that. You can even I mean, get student a discount. discounts. Okay, why not? Or you get this e kick or whatever that is. Oh, that's a, a fixed gear bike. Or an e-scoot. You should get an e-scoot. I mean, or then, or an electric bike. Like, why not try it out? Yeah. For a month. Temporary and available, I bet, because they're super popular. I'm sure. So I think these guys, I think this is, is really clever. Uh, Let's see. Okay. Um, remotely operated mobility. Oh, this is what they're reading. Oh my God. Bike for hire. Oh, wait. Iconic folding bike. Thing. Oh, the, the folding bike. Ugh. Everybody's all about the folding bikes. So, jobs in Tel Aviv, Mexico City, nothing you actually on this one. Okay, did we get the basic gist on this? Waste I think so. Time? All right, so I guess we should just, um, why don't we do, uh, remember I sent an article about what mobility was to the class. Was it from Forbes? I think I sent it to you. Let's see, it was. Oh my God, Eric keeps talking to me about this customer segment definition. So tired. Okay, so. Um, okay, what was I supposed to do? I already forgot. Trying to find a definition of mobility that you think you sent out. Well, it was that article, if you want to refer to that, or we just start from scratch and say, what is mobility? See, it's the ability to move a limb through its full range of motion. <laughs> not to be confused with flexibility, not to be confused with transportation. All right, so do you think we need to say something to the effect of it's maybe for Americans, mobility used to mean one thing, which was the ability to blah, 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 blah? Maybe, I don't know. I feel like we can just talk about mobility as a service. Not even possible. Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible if we can mention for people that have never heard it before, if you're an American reader and you're coming to this and you're like mobility as a service and you're like, what does that even mean? 
All right, let me just put it here. Whoop. Like, uh, I don't know, we'll rephrase it after. Okay, so I feel like it, it needs something. Um, and then the ability to move freely. I'll just put all, I'm just going to stack this in there so we have it and then we don't have to look at this old school definition. All right. And then let's look for, I'm about to sneeze. COVID all over the screen. Go away, go away. All right, Sarah. Five o'clock. Signing in in five, not at five. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. That's scary. Keep an eye on her. Um, okay, so. That was a whole minute ago. Um, okay. The article. Thought I should, didn't I, did I not send it to you? You might have. I couldn't find it. I was looking. Ability. So oh, it, it's in the five articles. Uh, articles to read. Oh. It was the first one in class, I think. Yeah, that kind of rings a bell. Required articles, perhaps. Uh, nope. Let me get these handy to give to my class for the new class. Uh, so let's try a mobility article. That sucks. Uh, here it is. Oh, it's just a medium post. And then this is already outdated. And then it's good to know here's my mill ability. All right. So Apparently there's a mobility as a service alliance. Can't believe that. Well, it's interesting. They have their own definition. So they say mobility as a service is the integration of various forms of transport services into a single mobility service accessible on demand. Oh, right. Like that was what I was looking for. Yeah, I believe it. Um, I wonder if we copy that, if we need to cite this person or if they took it from somewhere else, we'll figure that out. Um, okay, so right now I'm just obviously just putting all uh, the things that we need to reference here. Um, Yeah, I found the original place where that quote came from. Okay. Where is it anywhere it's good? Here. It's from the MAAS Alliance. Oh. Like from their own website. So we could just put, attach the footnote to it, please. Yeah. Then, okay. This is a great definition. It is. I, uh, I mean, wait, this other thing here. Yeah. Uh-oh. 
Somebody's here. Oh boy. Hi everyone. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Welcome. This is Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Hi. Nice to meet you finally. Nice to meet you finally as well. Mm -hmm. Hello, she world. Also. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jessica's the, the, the new Sarah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because she's not a writer. Couldn't possibly. <laughs> Um, yeah, but as there are many Robins to Batman, right, Jessica? Each of true. us have our unique skills. It's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Well, it's great to see you, Milady. So good to see you too. Welcome back to this side of the world. Thank you. Um, it's sort of okay to be back. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to see Carrie. Um, I bet. I bet. And eat some sushi. That's about it. Awesome <laughs> sauce. Otherwise, I'm sad not to sad to be here. Um, <laughs> General uh, state of the world in com conversation at the beginning of everything, right? Like that's just the norm right now. <laughs> I have decided yeah. to use the cat skills as my background today. So I was wondering what that was. I was thinking it was it could have been like the whole thing about writing, where seeing the forest through the trees. Actually, I am working on this metaphor thing with regards to the forest that I found in my journals. So you're not off, Jamie. <laughs> you're not off. A little bit of background inspiration for you. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Cool. Am I interrupting a train of thought? Go ahead and finish it or no, I, 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 what I want. <laughs> no, I'm usually interrupting. My, you can see our, our exciting process. We're right now, uh, we're working on a, 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 chunk, a, a small chunk of the digital transformation chapter 10 mm -hmm. where uh we, there's a mobility section that is really we've been pushing it off from chapter to chapter it was supposed to be a sidebar and now it's like it just didn't fit in anywhere else and, and now it needs to go somewhere where we tell people in general what mobility is what mobility is a service and hey everybody have you noticed that this book is mostly about mobility except for airbnb for weddings Right. Actually, it's interesting that you say that right now, because I think in my first read through of chapter nine, you have, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, mobility as a service, M-A-A-S. And I was like, what is that acronym? Yes. <laughs> so, um, sure. but it'll be interesting then that it happens in chapter 10 or to see how it well, comes about. Yeah. We're going to try to make it modular so that you can tell us where it goes. Um, yeah, I, I think overall, if you had a chance to look at my email earlier today. Yeah, let's do that now. You can yeah, see and I don't want to get too deep into chapter seven or eight, um, okay. because I think for chapter nine, it's more so that it's very different than what we saw in the first edition. So before I make any suggestions or recommendations, I kind of just want to make sure that I'm in the right headspace for like why you're talking about the things that you're talking about. Whereas okay. for chapter seven and eight, that's something I'm more familiar with. And it's more so just like, I think there, because the story is shifted around and how things are being woven, it's, there have been changes. And I think in reading those, these actually three chapters, the main thing that I'm noticing, which I don't think is a bad thing, it's more just something that we have to think about and will probably be something we'll talk about in September is that it's no longer coming from the I perspective. It's you using case studies that you're not necessarily involved with. And so like, there's a specificity that we're not getting in the same way. Um, so okay. that's, that's where I'm thinking about like that per like when we have our chapter seven and eight discussion, I think that might be more of a September thing because it'll be us having a discussion of like, do you, like, for example, in chapter seven, we talk about you, Jessica, your um, example. And it's kind of like when I read it through the first two times, I was really disoriented as a reader. And so like one thing I'm wondering is like maybe at the end of chapter six, you know, we use the case study of Airbnb for weddings, but maybe we just have to have a screenshot of like Jessica's storyboard. So that way, when we jump into chapter seven, it's like- It's not coming out of nowhere. Right. Like, who is this Jessica person? <laughs> it's like grounded into the fact that like you had a storyboard and you're building the prototype from the storyboard and we understand that that storyboard is there. Um, but okay. that's something like, again, when we have that conversation, Jamie, I think like that's a discussion of like, is that a missing piece that has to go now? Or is that something that we can wait till chapter till September when we kind of go through and just 
pull all those elements together and make Still sure that September in one week. Yeah, you know, it's totally doable. <laughs> pushing it off, just pushing it off. Yeah, but like it's it's like it's kind of like I think with those questions as well, it's like just a framing thing because I think now that I've read these three chapters, what I'm and this is one of the questions I have about chapter nine is that in the first edition, there was kind of more of a waterfall effect of the stories about like, if you do this chapter, then you do the step in this chapter, then you do the step in this one. And I don't think that's happening as much from chapter six onward. And that's because we're introducing these case studies that you don't have first person in. Um, uh, well, I, I want that to happen. Hmm. So, I mean, I want it to show that you do the, these techniques the first time order. through, ideally in this order, and that's how I teach them. Okay, uh, so then maybe it is just, and which is again a September conversation, maybe more so of like, I don't think it's necessarily like restructuring the whole chapter, but just like having certain transitions and like articulations at certain moments to be like, be aware at this moment or something okay. like that. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's where, that's where like in that email, what I'm saying is like, I don't necessarily know. And I think like when you go through my comments, just kind of like, do the ones that make sense to you. And then the ones that you're not really sure like what it means or what we should do, that might be a moment of like, we can probably wait till September or is this something where we can make a decision now? And that's a conversation I think for all of us to have. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, and definitely I want uh, Jessica on the call. Um, I think it would be helpful Jessica since you're the one who's helping um, keep all these things um, in the air while she's going through and doing it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so that's, that's like the main chapter seven and eight conversation. Yeah. Like and, the I, and the thing I, I, I definitely a slight or, you know, red flag was that I haven't written the anecdote. And I mean, we have the basic idea and we're doing that really cool timeline thing. Yeah. So that's like the chapter eight one. I think that's definitely where a lot of my comments come from. Like you're going to see me in my comments, I'll say like Nico example, Nico example over and over again. But I don't know if we want a Nico example because I don't know what the anecdote is. And when I looked back at the original chapter, because you have such a good timeline in the, the first edition, like that helps sustain, that story set up the foundation for everything else. So yeah. it's like, depending on the, the opening chapter, since you're using your, your USC students, then potentially we don't need Nico, we can use that. <laughs> Like, like Nico and Jessica are the USC students in that class. Right. And so I think like there's this kind of like there's this like, do we want to juggle Nico and Jessica and the USC students? And and I'm not seeing as like huge ads. It's kind of like when you and I were going back on forth on chapter four of just like, you know, as you and I discussed when we first started writing the book and what you've been doing, what you've learned so much and as you've become a more experienced writer, is that like you, you tell something and then you illustrate it with an example, right? Right. And so the illustration of the example is who. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like at this moment, I don't necessarily know in chapter eight who that person would be or if maybe it's kind of like a combination of it all. And that's just because we don't have, like you have the story in your head, but it hasn't been written yet. So I'm not sure how to pull the specificity I mean, I think we're story. talking in abstract, so I'm losing it. So yeah. should we look at eight to... To clarify, because no. I, yeah, yeah, sure. No, yeah. no, no. I think like that's the the seven eight conversation that we'll have. Okay. Um, after you go through the comments, because I feel like right. when you, okay. when you go through the comments, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see what I mean, and just be like that can wait till September, or you're gonna hit a couple of just like I don't know, and then let's have a conversation. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll do that. It's really hard right now with the. Deadline of chapter 10. They haven't done the interviews with VW or getting comments and I'm not complaining or venting I'm just giving you this sort of Lay of the land with totally. what we're dealing with. It's in that world where it's like we're, we're close to the end of the book But we're constantly being pulled back and doing these small loops and O'Reilly wants the manuscript to send out for technical review which we now learned yesterday isn't like, oh, you're missing a footnote here or there, but it's actually more of a peer review. Mm, okay. And they, so they want the whole manuscript, but there's no way I'm going to have the anecdotes done. So I think we're just going to hit the deadline and send out 99 or 95% of the book and then let them make all their comments to it. 
Yeah. While we focus on with you doing a structural thing because yeah. I, I mean, how, how much, I just don't, I feel like the books, we didn't get complaints back about the first edition uh, and, and, and I've worked so hard to fix things that weren't perfectly correct. So, you know, what are people going to say? I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, like overall, I think, and this is why I read the two chapters twice over because overall read through wise, like I understood everything that you were saying. And I think it's, it's more so of like, it's not that the, it's not that all the pieces aren't there. I just don't know if all the illustrative pieces are there. And then based on those illustrative pieces, I think there definitely would be a little bit of rearranging, but it's nothing like what we saw in, I think, the original okay. first edition. And that definitely comes down to the fact that, like, you obviously have a lot more experience in storytelling and the book and in how oh. you're weaving everything. So, like, pat yourself on the back for that. Um, I could reach it. I could. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's, that's fine. And then, like, I was kind of getting mixed up. I'm glad I did the two because I was kind of, um, it's, it's like, you know, when you design, if you pay attention to the small details, it's hard to figure out the big details and vice versa. So yeah. the first read through, I kind of did a copy edit. And then the second read through, I was just like, okay, why was this like weirding me out? <laughs> and right. I think, and the weirding me out part comes down to the fact where it's just like, and again, I, this is where I wonder if it's more a September thing. And you know this because you know my editing style of like, if I can sit down and read through the entire book, then I'll know where the flow isn't working through. And this, at this moment, I'm just kind of looking at snapshots. Yeah. I'm not really sure like how everything's going back. I actually, this morning I sat down and kind of just skimmed through the whole book again to remind myself what anecdotes and what stories were in there, so. And you're looking at the latest chapters in the folder that still say for O'Reilly, because I've been making quite a few changes to those. They have Eric comments in them now. Okay, no, I didn't. I was looking at the PDF you originally sent me three weeks ago. Uh, it's not far. It's not, our okay. changes haven't been drastic, but we went through and addressed. So there's Eric Swanson, who uh, we're going to be talking to next week, who's doing more kind of a fact check slash devil's advocate, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, he's the one that made me, like, pushing me to, to be to not just be like throwing around more of the jargon. Yeah. Um, you know, like I went from saying you can't design, think your way, blah, 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 to he's like, don't just like take a swap, a swap, a, a swap, what's this one? A, a swipe, a, a wet swipe. <laughs> uh, I'm getting my swats and my swipes mixed up. Um, just, you know, like I was like pulling my punches on design thinking. And then I was like, why don't I just say why, what my issue is with it and with lean yeah. startup and finally wrote that paragraph that needed to be articulated. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, and then this guy, David from Canada is coming in with comments about, well, Jared Spool said, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, here's Jared Spool's frame of reference and it's different yeah. from mine um, and it's okay. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's also where, as you know, it's kind of that delicate balancing act of what you acknowledge and then just, you know, so the reader doesn't get snagged and you're like, just continue on the journey with me here, right? Yeah. Um, so, and I think those are things that, I'm, th I'm thinking one of the comments in chapter nine, I think is your brother, and this maybe ties into some of the things that we might see in the peer review and technology review is he was saying like, uh, you know, a picture is a thousand words. And I think that's something that's also with the illustrative examples is that maybe because of the timeline and the deadline of making sure these chapters are done, we're kind of missing the specificity of steps. Again, I'm thinking about like chapter four, no, and it was the, it was chapter five. That's where you do the, the presentation, right? The steps. Yeah. Where when I went through and did my edit of it, like we had to slow down a bit because the steps were kind of coming fast and furious. And I was like, wait, what does this mean? How am I supposed to be doing it here? And so I think that also kind of comes with the illustrative cases of like, who's, who are we using to illustrate the point at this moment here? And right. how is that point being illustrated? And this again, at least I think ties back again to like, we've lost the eye perspective in the case studies from you because it's not you doing it and your step, which again, isn't necessarily problematic. It's just something for us to be aware of. But it's still me doing it when it's me overseeing 
uh, the students. The, the students, because that's just like the UCLA extension one, right? And it's still me. Right, totally. Airbnb. Totally. But at least right now in the chapter that I read, and I think this is because we don't have the story at the beginning of chapter eight, you're not a character in it yet. It's just you kind of story, tell story. There's no the story is just like twenty lines on a timeline saying this happened, this happened at USC, this happened, Trump said this, you know, um, this many people died. And it's just setting up, you know, then the USC students all of a sudden had to shift from online. It's just setting up the chapter that yeah. um, it got rewritten. It, it, it needed an entire rewrite because no longer do really use the research. Uh, yeah, um, totally. without a doubt. You, know, you got yeah. that. It's not getting into any, any particular person's. It was a story about process, very much like the trade ya, uh, you know, first meeting at the, at the house here. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I definitely see it like that. But right now it's being addressed to you. So it's like me, theoretically, the, the reader, how I'm doing it. And instead of like, um, gosh, I didn't, I, I tried really hard not to look at the original chapters this read through because I don't want to do that. But of like, um, Nico's the example in there of like, Nico sat down and he tried to write his interview question, or actually the example of Vita, when she was trying to figure out like, how to do her personas and she brought them to you and you were like let's rethink this and then she came back and did it so just like I think little things like that it's not huge structural stuff it's just those things that pull it together which again okay. makes me think it's a September thing more okay. than okay. this so again yeah. as I said like go through <laughs> do the ones that you think you can address and the ones that aren't clear to you let's have a conversation and see if you can address them and if not I think they're more of a September thing when we get to sit down and talk about all this. Okay, so yeah. it, as far, so we're gonna talk about nine now. Yeah, so with nine, I have a couple of questions just to help me understand when I go through um, my second edit of it, because I just read through to see what was happening and what changed right now. Um, so my first question is, is like, obviously the funnel matrix isn't here anymore. So I'm just curious for, my, for myself to understand like, how are what's how have we changed that conversion chapter and like why are we here now at this point okay <laughs> like why is this the iteration of it now okay so basically uh i besides that the funnel matrix was not a tool that uh some people liked it when i tweeted out like should i keep it in or throw it out some people were like i love it but Overall, it's something I've never used since like one client meeting and, um, and, but the, the thing with it and the thing with some of my brother's comments mm -hmm. um, and the thing with growth design is most of the focus is after ca customer acquisition. Mm. It's after a product is built. You can't sit there and tinker with levers of a product if there's no product. And my whole book is like, don't build a product. Just come up, you know, de-risk your business idea and mm -hmm. test, you know, and rapid prototype and test it. And so chapter nine, because chapter eight is like, let's test the prototype in a qualitative fashion. Yeah. Chapter nine's like, now let's test the concept or more like the business idea, the value proposition in a more quantifiable way with, um, landing page experiments and Facebook campaigns and such. And so funnel matrix, because it's, we're just at this point and we even threw out the suspect and all those stages, everyone's got all these different funnels and it's just like too much. What's, and so we went back in time to the Ada funnel where it's really just about marketing. Let's just get people aware of our products so we could learn who are they, what's the channel we need to build to them. And, um, you know, uh, what's the mess right messaging and do they even want it? And, you know, so my brother talking about retention and, and the growth design, getting into tinkering with the product. Well, wait, there is no product. I'm telling people don't build a product. So we have to kind of pull ourselves like constantly, like make sure that we're at the place where it's about testing a, at most an MVP slash prototype and not going into another book, yet another book about data-driven design, mm -hmm. yet another book about retention or churn, growth hacking, mm -hmm. you know, and just saying, 
we're taking some of these the, these techniques that are applicable for just testing like who the customer might be and how to reach out to them and showing the smoke test by VW as this example that, hey, it's not to, you could do it for $5, you know, my USC students do it all the time and you learn a little, or you can be an enterprise doing it too and they had no product. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So one thing that I wasn't sure about when I at least read chapter nine after seven or eight was, and so it's, it, it was that, is it supposed to be that like, I'm doing the experiment where I, I make my rapid prototype and then is it that I test my rapid prototype by doing qualitative research or is it that I test my rapid prototype by doing the quantitative research? Or is it either or, or is there a way that I probably am doing the qualitative research and then once I do the qualitative research and you know fix the problems, I, I move forward and I do the, the landing page experiment. I wasn't necessarily sure on the progression. I'll let what are we trying to answer, do? answer that because she should know the answer. Yeah. The answer? <laughs> I would say it's the the latter, the last one in that list where you're you're progressing through, you have a prototype, you put it in front of some people, you fix some of the problems that you see, and then like actually putting it out there in front of thousands of people, hopefully, mm -hmm. <laughs> even if it's just your five dollar ad, like that would be like the next subsequent step. So it'd be creating your prototype, collecting the qualitative data, collecting the quantifiable data, and you might have to like cycle back. Like if you, if you learn that nobody is interested in it and maybe there's adjustments you need to make, it might be having to go back and collect more qualitative data before you run another study. It might be something where you're, you're just iterating constantly, constantly on this, this more quantitative side where, you know, you got this qualitative data, but now you're just figuring out what's the right messaging, what's the right advertising that we need to like get this idea in front of people. So That's potentially my then, so a is, let me just hop in and, and just be very yeah. uh, specific. Eight is about qualitative research. Nine is about quantitative research. Yeah. We're not talking to people face to face. They're strangers. They're reacting to a Facebook campaign. It's a numbers thing. Uh, qualitative, we're talking to them online. We're getting their opinions. They're validating things down at a, a feature level. It's qualitative. So potentially then at least in reader progression, how I'm understanding this, if I'm coming through this, is that this is potentially my second rapid prototype where I'm doing quantitative research. Um, Maybe, probably or not. My third you or my need, fourth or fifth or whatever. You don't need a prototype. You just need two or three screens to create a landing page to make it look like you have an app. So then chapter seven, which is creating the rapid prototype, doesn't necessarily mean that the rapid prototype I've created at the end of six is the is the prototype or landing page or product that I'm creating in eight. Um, in six, you're basically storyboarding what will be the prototype and figuring out what's the value innovation. In seven, you're creating the rapid prototype and figuring out how to, uh, I believe, um, understanding what, uh, why you need to do experiment design or is that in eight, Jessica? So at least like when I read experiment? it, the way I, I understood it was chapter six is storyboarding. I get that. And the storyboard then leads to chapter seven where I'm understanding what experimentation is through rapid prototypes. And at the end of the chapter, through Jessica's example, I'm using the storyboard to make a rapid prototype. Uh, and then the rapid prototype uh, is- Seven is, is totally just, you're making the prototype. And, okay. you're, and then eight, I think is where you're writing this script, you're setting up the experiment so that we have, we, I've had too many instances where people, whether it be in workshops, uh, consulting, or my students, they write the, they do not write the right kinds of questions for doing qualitative research that help toward validating the business idea, the value prop, the, the business model. And so by that, introducing the experiment design tool at that point, forces them to say, okay, what am I actually um, needing to prove here? And so if these are the things I need to prove, then I better have questions that align with them. And then that drives the script and uh, taking the prototype to the level where you can put it in front of a human online or in person. And then that's tested. And whether they make updates or not, they can still take the home screen and slap it on a landing page on nine 
put some of the art and the messaging. I mean, you can do landing page experiments with a lot less than you can do qualitative testing with. Um, so eight, they can jump from eight to 10 or eight to nine. Oh, excuse me, eight to, yeah, no, eight, seven six. to eight or seven, seven six, to nine. Yeah. Is it chapter seven or chapter eight that ends with the like, if you are here, move on to chapter nine. If not, go back to chapter three. Eight, I think. Uh, yeah. So but, yeah, because that's if you got like if people gave you feedback that said like this idea sucks, I'd never use it or something akin to that. Then you want to go back, you know, go back to the drawing board. So I, I hear what you're saying and I understand what you're saying, but when I'm reading it, I'm not necessarily making that leap yet. And so I wonder if like, and Jessica, maybe make a note to this is like, go and check those steps and see if they have to be re-clarified. The and steps maybe in, in, in chapter eight. eight. Yeah. Or even maybe at the end of chapter seven, maybe we need a parallel structure of both of just mm -hmm. like, so that at the end of both chapters, it tells reader. you where to go. Yeah. Of like how you should understand this and where you are. Um, which again, like, I think that's a discussion, Jamie, for maybe you and Jessica to think about, or we kind of like, can we leave that to, you know, September when we just go through and clarify all these things? But I guess like, right when I was reading it, and this again, maybe comes from the fact that I'm reading chapter by chapter and I'm not reading the whole thing through yet still right. is, um, I wasn't necessarily sure how to orient myself if I'm using the examples to kind of understand where I am in the process. And so I wasn't necessarily sure about the state base in between that happened between chapter eight and chapter nine of like, it sounds like what you're saying is that it's definitely quantitative. I understood that, but there wasn't necessarily, I think the quantitative wasn't pushed for chapter nine, wasn't pushed as strongly as the qualitative was in chapter eight. So maybe there's again, some parallel structure storytelling that's missing, which again could maybe be left off till September. But it sounds like what you're saying is that the rapid prototype that I develop in chapter seven isn't necessarily the, the, what I'm using in chapter nine, or as you said, I finished chapter eight and now I can just take like the landing page or part of it, or just as Jessica, you said, like fix some things and slap it up. And this is, this is where I'm at now. Um, and I think like, that's one thing that yeah, I wanted to clarify <laughs> as I'm reading this of like, where am I? Yeah, now you're using the prototype from seven for nine. But the prototype after doing chapter eight or the prototype from seven, I'm either doing chapter eight or chapter nine. Just, just assume they're gonna go from seven to eight to nine. Okay, so yeah, I, I wonder if there's just like a little bit of table setting that's missing there so that I understand, like, yeah. you, uh, per maybe. what Jessica said, of like, you've gone through it, you've... Um, here, here it is right here, you know, so uh, you, you, you uh, what we figured out the five possible scenarios, like you invalidated your value prop, yeah. um, but you believe you targeted the right, then you said blah, 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 blah. Um, or do you, you know, so, you know, giving them instruction to that, or are you invalidated, but you believe you targeted the wrong customer, go back to chapter three, you validate your value prop, but not your business model, look at the interview, you validate your value and, and your business model, but not all your peer experiences do that. You validated all your hypotheses, mazel tov, but this experiment only was five to 10, maybe expand your sample set or go on to chapter nine. And in chapter nine is where they're building a landing page you know, just like you saw with the BW one that has basically the, uh, it's basically got a home screen and whatever screens are in there to give people a sense that this is a real product and what it does and to download the app, click that download button. That's all we want them to do is like, look at, that's why we like it in German. Cause it's like, we don't want to distract people with what it says, it's more like, what are the, what are the elements? And the goal is to get them to click this darn button here. And, you know, here it says the features and, um, and how to do the testing and how online comes in there and keep it as simple. Mm -hmm. and that's a story. Yeah. So then I wonder if it is part of the illustrativeness there, because at least, against 
when it comes to the story wise of like if we're using so I just looked at, before we get into that, like, so with the VW example, I'm assuming one of the main reasons why we're using that as an example is also to set up the digital transformation chapter, right? Like it's not just startups and small businesses and everything doing it. It's as you say, like an enterprise can do it too. It's an enterprise that's setting up the digital transformation. It's also, but yeah, it's really important to contrast that these aren't little you know, that, that it, it, or it isn't even like book your care that VW does them and they did it without a real product, you know, yeah. and, and to get people and, and to not be this book that's focused on what happens, you know, like, you know, how does all this stuff apply to product design, you know, or thinking, you know, not, it's not to say that it's not doing UX strategy when you're sitting there fine tuning a product yeah. using data. It's just to say, this book happens to be about, I mean, you can, you can, you know, here's, here's, here's some terms and you can start read further reading if you want to know more about that. But right now we're just using that concept, the concept of, of growth hacking and, and growth design and yeah. hooked and all that stuff to just at least make them aware of the, what was formerly called the suspect stage to get them in to hook, to get this idea, this taste of, of testing Right. Of looking at numbers and like the most important, uh, you know, part in here, which we're still waiting for a hundred percent approval is the, is these results, um, which we then break down here into, uh, you know, helping people understand. And I have this exact paragraph with Tradia where I broke it down so you could see what the ad spend was, how the campaign worked and what they learned from it. Yeah. And maybe what it is, this is more just a brainstorm and such. Cause again, I'm going to go through and read through the chapter with all this new information, this information. So I understand the intention behind everything is what you're saying is the contrast because the contrast is that they're an enterprise, as you say, and they're, they don't have the product and this is how they're doing it. But maybe it's the contrast of also bring the story over from chapter eight with your USC students of like, they had this information and this is how they fixed their prototype and now they're ready to do the landing page. And then having like, this is how a small, you know, startup mentality would do it. And this is how an enterprise would do it. Maybe that's. I'm, I don't know. I'll let Jessica, I'll just say one thing and then I'll let Jessica try to understand what you just said. Cause I yeah. didn't follow it. But, uh, because Sebastian was unable to give me, you know, we're still waiting for a complete, you know, you know, allowance to show the results and stuff. But like, um, because we didn't have such things, uh, we had no intention to talk about Jessica's Facebook campaign. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we wanted to show, where is it, Jessica? The five dollar thing. The unbounce ad results. It should Are you going be... in the right direction? Um let me find it. It is here it is, yeah. Yeah. So here we we had to pivot over to Jessica's story of a Facebook campaign by Jessica so that we could show we could talk about problem solution, talk about and and get behind the and show that look with even five dollars you can see enough of a contrast of a data set to let you know like what could be the right way to do the advertising and then you could start fine-tuning your uh your landing page as well um and so we here we're talking about you know even with five bucks the spread between the two ad sets was enough evidence for jessica to double down on her problem ad mm -hmm. um so that's the one thing we like we I think it, while I don't like that we went back to Jessica um, and, and we couldn't go back to Nico, who is really more featured in eight because he didn't have these campaigns and we can pay him to run them and, and make that content. Like I can get any more content that you want if you think it's confusing to use Jessica's. Uh, we used it as a placeholder because we know it's important to show that you don't, you can spend, you can, be entrepreneurial and work for a, a, a company that's not allowing you to do these kinds of experiment and do a $5 experiment on yeah. your own. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's definitely really important too. Hmm. 
I guess like the, and again, this is, I'm going to read through again, because this is what happened when I read chapter seven and eight is like, I read it, I kind of had some impressions, but I walked away for a few days and then read it again. And now I feel more certain on like, why I think certain things <laughs> about what's going on. But at least like right now, I guess what I'm wondering here is, I think the, the one, and this ties into some of the things I'm thinking of seven, eight, and so I'll pay attention to this when I do nine, is like, if, if I'm the reader coming here and I'm not involved in any of these case studies and I've been kind of following a progression through the steps, I'm not necessarily sure if this is running parallel or if this is running after and the Volkswagen case study doesn't necessarily help me know where I am. So to clarify, are you talking about how, because we kind of follow along with like Airbnb, <clears throat> excuse me, Airbnb for weddings. And so people can kind of visualize, okay, this is where they're at with Airbnb for weddings. This is kind of like, I'm following that same train of thought with my own project. Yeah. And then when we get into seven and you introduce my project and eight, and then you introduce Nico's project like, and then nine and you yeah. introduce VW and you're like, wait, I was following Airbnb for weddings. Like, how do I keep, is that right. kind of what you're talking about? That like, it's, it's easy to get on. lost. Yeah. You can't visualize yourself because you're like, yeah, like are these where, separate where am projects? I in my process pretending to go along with what's happening? I and see. so I think like, as I was saying earlier with like, and I, and I understand why we're using the USC case studies and I think they're really interesting and it's obviously something that we did in the first edition. So there's no reason why not to do it now. Um, is like, is it just something about, you know, hooking you in earlier <laughs> so that it, it's, it's, you have a sense of that pace. And so here, yeah, I'm not really sure. The, the information is coming at me, but I'm not really sure orientation wise what's going on. And you mentioned the German, Jamie, you probably saw my comment where I was like, should this be German or not? It's just kind of. Uh, we haven't looked at the comments yet. So. Okay. Yeah. So one comment I had is like, oh, this is in German. And so it's like in, in the text, you're like, this is the, um, you know, this is the header and this is the CTA, but because it's in German, I was like, it's not visually something that I caught as well. And it's just like an kind of an added disorientation as well. So I can drop in. I have the English version of the landing page because I was lucky enough to mm -hmm. grab them on my Chrome browser. Uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I could slap them in there if it'll make it easier. I didn't because I thought it was made it more international having it in German and it would take the, this whole idea of stop, don't worry about what it says. Look at what it's, look at, think about this conceptually. Yeah, no, I definitely got that. And I, that's why I'm not necessarily inclined to say, let's do one or the other yet. <laughs> um, so, okay. So let me see, like, maybe right now it's just like too much yeah, I, yeah, abstraction I, on top of confusion. So yeah. that's why it's hard to assess. Yeah. So I think like right now, and again, I'm going to read through it and feel more strongly about certain points. It comes down to with like seven and eight of like the, one of the biggest rules of writing, right. Is show don't tell. And so there's a lot of, I think, telling going on. Um, of like, this is, this is what you do. This is how you do this step. This is what's going on. But because it's being addressed as like you, you, you do this, but I don't have like a specific example of this is where like I am in my process and how this gets done and how this person did it and faced it. Um, and so that doesn't necessarily mean, I think the Volkswagen example is, is interesting. That's why I'm wondering, I'm like, is it a contrast thing? Is it that we need to bring in a USC student example here? Is it maybe a matter of a little reorganization in the chapter just to help I mean, emphasize what, this? I'm confused on what. This is, this is me kind of, I, I'm not exactly sure what I think is going on to you. I'm just kind of ideating here myself. Okay. So, yeah. I think you should take it, not to say you haven't taken a careful look. I mean, we spent so long on this making sure that, we didn't, we didn't check it against other landing page, how to choose yet, but we definitely went, did we have someone test this one, Jessica? No, we just had the eight. landing page experiment. No, we tested eight. We, we definitely like painstakingly like went through and went through Blackboard where I had my extra notes and went through at students that didn't get it right and said, what I is it? I am not questioning. Yeah, I don't, I don't think chapter the, at all. I don't think the problem is like the instruction that we're giving maybe how we say it needs some editing, but that's like a different point. Yeah, I, I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, I think the point is just that like, 
like we're just kind of like dropping people into these separate stories and readers are maybe going to have a hard time visualizing like because they're tracking along with Airbnb for weddings for so long and then we like drop them into these other stories and it's not that like we can't do that or it's wrong to do it but it's yeah. just like maybe we need a little bit clearer transition where we're talking yeah. about like yeah okay like so we, like Jessica was able to do this like you know yeah. but let's look at another example of like doing something whatever it is like we just need yeah some like I, I don't know where I kind of chapters. chapters pin wise onto the map of just like where where am I but like when it comes to Jamie like when I think of writers like I don't question ex you'll see in a couple of comments I was like maybe you should change this word to this because if anything I know that you overthought whether you should use that word or not <laughs> <laughs> like, which one was this um there are a couple of comments are like maybe this word instead but i was just like she probably overthought this so i don't question like the order at all and this is also i think like in the earlier chapters when it comes to the specificity of like step one step two go through and do this they're very clear and so i know that you know all those steps because you've walked the students through that and so i think like in some cases it's just we need to slow down a little bit more or maybe i'm missing something because we don't have that that illustration or the example so i have a sense of like am i understanding this right do i understand the nuance of it and how it can be different depending on like if i'm an enterprise or a startup or if i'm at this point or that point okay. um so so let me yeah so i'm gonna read through chapter nine again um and see if i can pinpoint because this is also what happened with chapter seven and eight is like i feel when i read through it a second time I identified the places where I think that's where we would focus on weaving the story in which is again why I think when we have that conversation there'll be something where we can agree to just leave it till September when we go through the whole book um but let me think about here with I'll, I'll go back and read through chapter nine with this all this information in mind and see if I can pinpoint those moments because what I'm understanding is that like at least from like the idea of if I'm a reader following through this, I should think of this as consecutively that I need to have uh, that I want to have an understanding of like it's simple enough for if I have five dollars or even an enterprise would go through on these steps like this is very valid for them to be doing that. Um, right, it's the yeah. same process if you're spending five dollars, five hundred right. or five thousand. Right. It doesn't take really user thinking. research and rapid prototyping and making sure that you get all this information. Um, yeah. And, and also, that we're also still introducing the idea of growth design and the idea that maybe you're, that this is valid whether you're at the beginning or you've got the product and what's going on as well. Yeah, yeah. I think so. When and, it comes to, to chapter 10, okay. I guess what I'm curious is, so wait, wait the can I say the first line, edition. Before yeah. I switch gears, uh, um, one other device we've been adding is this mm. these little flow charts so people could yeah understand. yeah so don't they've been in there they're in eight and they're in nine where yeah. we say here's the order of what we're about to show you yeah i think that that's fine okay yeah um so I think also like this is where, can you send me an updated version of the toolkit? Cause I haven't seen it since the first edition. Okay, so, sure. That'd be great. Cause I don't know how that's different. Um, and that's probably something I'll pay attention more to in September. <laughs> we go through. Next week. <laughs> yeah, next week already, great. <laughs> uh, okay, well, should we be worried? I don't think so. I mean, again, like I read through at least chapter seven and eight, I read through it. And I think for early publication and such, I think it should be fine. Wait, we're not. We're not that's, talking. that's the deadline, right? Like they want the book so that they can. No, no, no. There's no more chapters going up early. That happened oh. in January. This, okay. They want the whole manuscript to publish to get it out. Like we already missed the chance of it coming, being done by January. Okay. Now it's coming out in February, which sucks, but it's fine since COVID and I can't tour really the U.S. But like, uh, no, we need to turn in the whole manuscript, get it reviewed, and then they're going to print the book. It's done. Okay. We have three weeks to finish the book. And then we give, to finish the manuscript, then it goes out and you have it for structural editing and we can go in and, and, tie, and tie things up, but that's it. Like, okay, hold on, wait a second. <laughs> then I've been behind on this and I didn't understand the email. So wait, 
I thought when I read the last email from the publisher that goes out for technical review and I get it September 14th. Right. And then we, ha I have it for two weeks and then any changes that we make get in there. Then, I have, then we have like a week to make updates and turn in the manuscript for proofing and make the artwork and it's done. Okay. I'm going to think about, I'm going to think about that then now that I know that, and then I'll get back to you on these other two things because maybe then we want to just do, I mean, you have to finish chapter 10, no matter what, that's the priority, but then maybe this means. Fortunately so. Yeah. yeah. And it's okay. really hard. It's a theoretical chapter. And as you know, I also have to write two personal anecdotes or do the timeline and the the Benjamin story and the Jamie BW story. And I'm actually secretly like putting them off because I want to just get them off to the technical review to hit that deadline, you know, and just pretend that they're not ever going to be there. And then all of a sudden focus on them, you know, right. but we're really stretched. Uh, we're going to miss these fucking deadlines uh, by a, a lot. I mean, we're going to be turning in things that aren't complete to get the technical review deadline. And then you have the whole book and we have two weeks to fix what we can and address Eric and Darren's and Lex's and David's and Shlomo's questions. All the stuff. Uh, okay. All this stuff, which is literally impossible. I'm also teaching on Mondays, you know, and uh, so. Um, Good times then. All right. So it's good let time. me I'm gonna share the toolkit, the 2021. This is it, right? Yeah. Use the research yeah. experiment. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So what I'm wondering actually then is I'm going to go back and read nine and finish my comments. If maybe just starting next week, I should start at the beginning. I think so. And start going through. Yeah. Yeah. So that and we have. Cause you're going to see stuff comments to you from Eric, like what's up with the writing here? And it's like, we're, we're so over our heads with, uh, it, it seems like, a, is this looks like it's shared with you already. So I'll read oh. But no, that's not your fault. Let me just email you. Yeah, just send it to me again. It's probably buried somewhere, honestly. Yeah, don't. Uh, I'll send it to you again. Um, and don't, I mean, I know this sounds like a strange, like I'm not. It's far more important for me to make this book great. And, uh, whether it comes out in February or March or April and is great is way more important than hitting the deadline, turning in a 90% or 70%, 80% baked book and regretting it and it coming out on in January. Yeah. 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 You know, like, as I've said with the first book, I am never going to write another fucking book. Right. So Until I'm saying the second that, edition and then the third edition, there is no third edition. I'll be too old. Things gonna come You're out. You're gonna be a poet at the end of your life, writing I mean, haikus. Fine. <laughs> I don't give a shit about this stuff barely anymore, right? Like I'm tired of it. You know, let the kids come up with some other stuff. You know, enjoy my book, make the most of it. It's the best thing I can. I want to put out my bus effort. I think Jessica's been extremely helpful keeping it, it, it you know, me accountable and keeping it flow and and being like this person who. Is, is the target reader, yeah. you know, or one of the target readers. And um, so while I'm saying like, we've got these deadlines, but at the same time, it's like, if I, if we have to miss a deadline, then we're gonna miss a deadline because I want it to be right. And so I need your help to say, delete Eric's comment. This is ridiculous. Or Darren's not quite getting it. Or, you know, we don't need to belabor this. And, and yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. because, we're, we're going to, uh, Jessica and I are going to turn into pretzels, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Without a doubt. Okay. So, so yeah, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to read through chapter nine here. Chapter seven, chapter eight, comments are good to go. Let's still follow along on the agenda that I put out for that. Handle the comments that make sense to you. Then if there are any questions about them, let's have that conversation. So that way I can know if that's going into this, edit that I'm about to go into and to have a conversation or if it's something that you want to handle 
before the immediate O'Reilly deadline. Um, I'm going to do the same for chapter nine, but I think overall, Jamie and Jessica, my kind of initial comment of just like, I'm not necessarily sure where I am oriented as a reader still stands. Um, but I'm going to pay more attention to that to see if I can pinpoint those exact moments. Um, yeah, and I don't want you to nine. just pinpoint them. I want you to solve them. So that's what my full edit is. That's, <laughs> right? that's like, what I'm saying is like, can, to me, I feel like that's the full edit because this is then where I'm going to do the editing that you and I did a lot in the first edition where I think I'm going to play around a little bit and then you and I are going to have phone calls, all of us together and we'll, we'll hash it out. So, um, and I think it'll be a lot more fun at least for Jessica and I to have 10 done and 11 is just a two pair of updates. So we are focused on yeah. speeding it up instead of sitting there trying to write a first draft of a theoretical chapter on the subject yeah. that's totally insane. Well, I'm thinking like if you're saying this is so theoretical and like chapter two in the first edition was the hardest one to do, then this is a hard chapter. So you guys should definitely just focus on that and, and get it done. What I do want to know for chapter 10 is that is it, at least my original understanding of it, is it's kind of like a standalone digital transformation yeah. chapter, which doesn't necessarily tie into like whatever's happening in the other chapters. Very much so, yeah. Okay. I, it's like... A personal anecdote bringing back the Benjamin story on mm -hmm. transformation. If you remember the one about the dude that left Poland and went to yeah, yeah. Warsaw. Yeah, I remember you saying. And, yeah. And we, it, 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 Jessica thought it was salvageable very much so, and we just need to figure out the bridge. But yeah. then um, we already got most of what is digital transformation. It's in a detailed outline form. We're... Mm -hmm. We pretend we were pretending for this call. We're going to do the mobility sidebar that might be part of the content that might be moved to nine. And then the case study of digital transformation. We have interviews. The first interview set up probably for next week with the guy running the digital transformation. Blah blah blah. At VW. And this is also VW as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it the and same thought, guy, Sebastian, who's also no? It's him? way another guy, way higher up. That's right. doing, Sebastian runs like a, a, a lab, whereas this guy's doing, you know, a digital transfer, he's a digital transformation guy. Got it. Um, okay. So it's, it's a big deal. I, it's such a big deal. I even went out and bought a VW so that I could have a picture <laughs> of me where we show me in front of my, uh, where is it, a nine? A nine, yes, okay, yeah. This is why I don't doubt Jamie's validity of her research. Like, yeah. Nope. No, no, no. Nope. <laughs> right. I spent $17,000 so I could have this picture of me in my prom dress when in front of my first Carmen Ghia, in my first car, the Carmen Ghia, and then this will be replaced with a picture of me leaning in front of my also house. Also, the storyteller in me is super excited. Just like, that's a good juxtaposition right there. <laughs> Parallel, like, structure, you know? That's creating a theme and motif visually hey hey <laughs> meanwhile jamie texted me when she was getting the car she's like most expensive photo op ever <laughs> does that mean it's a business expense i i wish i could write it off <laughs> against something i the, the my company made what 20 grand this year you know you know us writers you know don't get paid very much no no we do it because we can't help it <laughs> that's really what it comes down to it would bother us way too much if it didn't happen otherwise. Um, okay, yeah, so chapter seven and eight, when you have a chance, just go through and the checks that you normally do, let's have a conversation next week with regards to um, any of the, if it belongs in the fuller edit, which I'm gonna start doing on Monday of next week. Okay, should we um, okay, let's pretend that let's let's hit, let's put it on the calendar sorry to interrupt you sarah yeah no go for it i Please think that sorry. would be very helpful actually um for me <laughs> and this uh won't be a recorded show uh, so what i'm thinking is actually what i'd like to do if we're looking at a calendar like if i start on monday of next week can you put us in september and the 14th technically is when it's sent out to technical review. Oh my God. Like, no, the 18th. The 18th. 18th okay. But in the meantime, it'd be like jamming whatever, not sending it because it's like, oh, it's coming in today and then sending it Monday, you know, Sunday night. Yeah. Whatever. So I like, do I'm, I'm thinking I'd like my full edit to be done by that week. So that way we can use whatever time left over 
And I'm sure like during those two weeks, I'll be calling and we'll be having conversations as well. Well, Um, Wait, wait, hold on a second. Just FYI, you're getting like a first pass at a structural edit for the 18th and then it goes out to those people for peer review. But then we have the whole 18th for a month to tighten it up. Okay, so the 18th to October 18th. Yeah. Or uh, September 18th to September 30th. I don't know. You know. I think I think we I think we said in one of the emails I think we said the two weeks and then in the other one I think we said like through October. I mean over overall Jamie I'm in agreement of you. I don't know if you remember that conversation we had in the first edition where you were getting really freaked out about deadlines and I was like until they call you and say like we're firing you because of it like it's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know like they can do their technical review. I mean the book will probably be a bestseller for them again because I'm going to market the shit out of it. And it's a solid update. It's a ridiculous second edition. You saw it's like almost its own book again. It's not a second edition. It's a new book. <laughs> because you are who you are, Jamie Lee. <laughs> but I like to name you UX Strategy. And, and, you know, I just, it used the framework of the first edition. I, I you know, I, I, people maybe, they'll, they'll buy both books. I mean, I actually, when I was in publishing, there was a guy who wrote a book and he did a lot of changes in the second edition with the idea that people would buy both. So, so there you I go. Think, yeah, I, 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 you know, I just, I don't feel, I don't, you know, I don't feel bad for the choice. I, 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 I learned a lot in the last five years of the workshops and the this and the that. So, uh, and then I, I think the online gorilla user research is going to kill it for people. Um, well, it's super it- interesting for me also just reading through this because I was there for the first pass and I was there for all the original experiments. And it's just like, you've obviously, I mean, I'm already going to start implementing these in my own research. So it's all good. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> We were psyched to get that done and the storyboarding, the scripting is so much better. The competitive analysis is so much better, like everything. Well, I mean, just think about, you're talking about when you market this, like you were just a newbie growth designer when you started all this and now you're definitely not. (laughs) You're, you've got all the experience. Yeah. Growth hacker, right? So, So back to the dates, it's like, we have this kind of date where we need to send it's like you're kind of not you're kind of like using the next few weeks to go through the whole thing and figure out like i think anything that really needs a major change before it goes to technical review because the worst thing that could happen is it goes to technical reviews and they're like this thing makes no sense i can't make any sense of you know what i mean like yeah that actually i'm not worried about at all i think all the technical review stuff if you have peers to know even more than i do Here's what she said. We'd like to get five to seven tech reviewers to read a review. This usually includes test customers as well as designers and people in the series. Reviews are usually writers who are able to give constructive criticism. They're able to tell that the material is genuine and on spot. Yeah. They look for things like, is the kind, kind of content the author covers what the reader would expect from a book like this? Is the content organized in a way that makes sense? Is anything undefined, undeveloped? Is it accurate, complete, and useful? Does this help? Yeah. I mean... I'm going to sound pretentious here, but I would say like, they'll help you with the last question. I'll get you on the first three questions. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, but That's why I feel like we do have that month or whatever, or three weeks. I don't even know the deadline. I have to look at the contract. The deadline is when we're done. And we're going to work. Yeah, no, awesome. that, make, that makes sense to me. I think I'll still use those weeks to, it sounds like I'll do kind of a parallel edit unless anything is really, like untoward, but that parallel edit, I'm going to be doing the, the full edit as structurally to make sure it's kind of all pulled together. And I'm, so that way, when we get to the 18th, whatever is turned into the technical reviewers, we're ready to go to start pulling it together. I guess like, I just don't want it to be that I'm starting from zero on the 18th. I think that I need yeah. to be revved up. Um, yeah, I think doing yeah. a full proof and going through and making notes and all that stuff is great of the whole book, one through 10, making sure you're on the latest chapters and then Jessica and I will get what we can. You'll shift to 10 once we can. We Maybe, you know, you could even jump to 11 or we can jump to 11 and do the last, the two paragraphs that need to be updated. 11 is just like two pages. Yeah, I mean, 11 is 
it's this it's just the interviews right so it's just no, the interviews aren't in this book no it's just oh. the denouement it's the one that says it's the grandpa alex story okay so no so chapter 11 is the last chapter now is the denouement okay yeah it's like uh all that's changing boxing 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 whether you're a startup founder none of that changes so basically look at this uh, sometimes products never see the light of day the second round the software engineer we met in chapter one pivoted to blah 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 that paragraph will be updated to yeah that's gonna be easy to My do students, Vita and Ina will be updated and then the third paragraph is about jared will be about uh vw and then that's it 11 is done you know the rest of that chapter is exactly as it yeah, is i think that that's true i agree um ten, one ten thing is i like want to last big hurdle yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 one thing I want to ask is when, can you go to the drive where you've got all the documentation? Um, Cause I think like when I do my edit, I don't, I want to potentially make a Sarah version. Is there any way you want me to label and handle that? Right, we had you in your own seven and eight edit. And now we have Eric, I think making edits in seven and eight and Jessica, did we, what, what are we doing? <laughs> Excellent question. Uh, I think, okay, so we have copies of chapter nine for VW, which I'm going to transfer all that text over today. I guess then Jessica, can you make me a little sandbox where I can feel like I'm playing by myself and not ruining anything? Yeah. Uh, so do you want just like copies of all the latest chapters in a folder yeah. so you can access them, comment them? Comment, change it. Yeah. Do whatever I'm going to do. Wait a minute, so are you going to, so wait, we're thinking of Jessica making copies into their own separate full. I'm just worried like about if you should be working on the, what, if you should be working on the main, on the, on the working copies so that we're not sitting there. Are you, do you think it's smarter to work on copies of the working copies or the working copies? I guess like my version would be the next version of the working copy. Okay, well I can update all of the versions. I can like just make like a V3 or a V4, wherever we're at, archive all of these ones as we have them right now. Yeah. And that way everything in this folder would be like clean, updated copies so that you can do whatever you yeah. want there. And we can always go back into the archive that, and grab exactly the last saying. version we yeah. had before yeah. you started editing. Is I want to, I want to avoid what happened with chapter four and five, Jamie. So. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I do too, but I'm also worried that Jessica and I haven't gone to all the comments yet. Okay. It's almost like Jessica, we should stop on 10 and go through all the comments and then just hand off one through nine okay. to Sarah. Okay. Right, Jessica, so she has the latest versions and we're not going to them. And then uh, and then 10 is, uh, um, uh, then we can go on 10. Yeah, I think then the, the only question is if, like, is it better to have like how soon do you need chapter 10 Sarah you know for like your full edit don't I okay. mean chapter 10 at this moment I, if it's if it's as separate as yeah it's pretty standalone dead, so I think it's fine okay I'm not worried take the all the time take all the time that you need with that I would so I say like if you can go through the comments and do chapter one through six because I've I've looked through all of those that would be good and then chapter seven through nine because I as I told you Jamie like uh, I I don't know if I'm going to finish it today. It'll probably be early next week. I'll finish nine then. Okay. Um, so we did one through three. We could, those you could start on and we're going to do four through six. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I know we're like all talking at once, especially me over talking, but, uh, collaboration. Right. It's so, it's so heinous. Um, my feeling is we need to, do some org here and, and, and uh, clean out stuff that we, what we should have in here is just the ones. I'm worried that seven and eight and this seven and eight are going off in two different directions. And uh, mm. uh, I don't know what to do about that. Um, nine, uh, I think it's, we, we just need to go through the comments. 11, we could go ahead and just make those final updates 
it's good. I don't think you need to do much to not, I think forget it. You know what 11 yeah. is, right? For chapter 11, I wouldn't worry about that, honestly, until end of September when we're okay. done at everything. I think treat chapter one through six as a unit for me and chapter seven through nine as a unit of, because right now, like those are kind of at a specific conversation point for all three of us whereas chapter one through six are at a different conversation point okay so you can i these ones that say final ready for ready for o'reilly release mm -hmm. you can go ahead and, and take one through three now and four and four through six starting monday okay and you, i was gonna say can you put maybe just a little asterisk or something in front of them as well, so that way they're easy to identify. Yeah, I'm gonna go, what if I go, uh, what do you think? Um, James I think we should just make copies of everything, like as I it stands now. Jessica, I just wanna have like, for again, our chapter four or five debacle of like, at least that's, it's archived in its current form before I start going into it, and that way it's easier for us to compare. Got it. Okay. Yeah, well, so I can we... just like make copies of all of these and then move the old copies to the archive. Okay. Does that uh, work? Yeah, well, you could do that uh, tomorrow, whenever, right? And then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'm not going to touch it till next week. So. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about seven and eight, but I guess why don't tomorrow we switch to close out six, seven, eight, and nine comments? Yeah. Jessica. And again, the main thing with seven and eight, I'll try, uh, I don't know if I'll get nine done until next Monday, but is oh, to decide if it's something that you can change now or if it's something that I'm going to catch when, I, when I'm going to play around with on the full edit to make sure the story gets tightened together. And I think that's just conversations that we have to have as to what the correct way to go about doing that is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Structural, I think it's for the most part, it's fine. It's like making that loop or that weave just to make sure they're they're all there. Okay. So oh, should I... we should we go through like four, five, and six maybe tomorrow and try to address those comments? That way, I can make I can archive those, make you know new version copies. That way, Sarah has one through six where we've addressed all of the you know other comments already. All the comments like from as Eric. Yeah, the outside comments. Well, we're going to leave his comments in there for you to decide if, you know, his devil's advocate comments are, are worth addressing. Okay. And basically, we're going to freeze. We aren't going to touch one through six anymore. Yeah, after tomorrow. Yeah, after tomorrow. And then, and then we'll have a, a call about one through six. About seven through nine. Start on um, Monday. All right, let's... So, no, a seven through nine is when we'll talk, yeah. Because one through six, when it comes to me on Monday, it's mine. And I, I that's going to take me probably a good week anyway to get through. Okay. So that means then that starting on Monday, you can address the comments from seven to nine, which will then also let me finish my nine okay. right, right now. Okay. That's so fine. we'll just charge forward. We'll do four, five, six. Jamie and I, you'll, we'll do that tomorrow and address all the outside comments that we can, leaving the ones that are like super big game changers for Sarah to also look at and see if it makes sense. Okay. And then we'll make updated copies of those, archive everything as it is now. And then when we work again on Tuesday, we'll have Sarah's comments for seven, eight, and nine. Right. Correct. Okay. So then you and I, Jamie, can just keep working through those seven, eight, and nine comments okay. while we have already handed off one through six to Sarah. Yeah, exactly. That okay. sounds good to me. I'm almost feeling like that we send out the book. Or really watched this, saw this video. We don't have to publish it. Uh, with one through nine and 11. And there is no chapter 10. And we just continue working on 10, but we don't. Because it's going to slow us down from turning. I mean, I'm not saying we throw out 10. We just don't include it. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure the story is of The Great Gatsby, which is one of the most titular and you know, important novels of American history, that American literature, is that it was at the publisher about to be printed and F. Scott Fitzgerald came and changed it all. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
and that and that's how like before that it wasn't what we read in school and everything like that it was whatever the publisher was going to print and then he came and was like no i can't do this change it all and he did it because of an editor <laughs> and so now and now it is the great gatsby so it can um, happen to you. it can happen i won't even think i can compare myself to uh you're basically f scott Fitzgerald. <sighs> not um all right well this was fun uh yeah. slightly freaked out so wait let's just put something and, on and this is pretty much a normal jamie collaboration session sounds good <laughs> i miss you sarah <laughs> I do too. Huh. Sarah and I had so much fun touring when she came with, when we met in Budapest. What an adventure. Ooh. It was really fun. And it was really great too because when we went to Croatia and you gave the keynote as well. But then Sarah opened for me in Budapest. Mm -hmm. Nice. It this was is where great. I get to put on my resume, Jessica. Like, <laughs> I've done a couple lectures in Europe. Yeah, you're like, you know how it is touring on Europe. <laughs> Classic. Driving around me crashing the car into the walls of the mm -hmm. when got the cars got stuck into a into a actually my favorite memory of Budapest of you just kind of being very stubborn is Jamie when we were leaving Budapest, she really wanted a pizza slice. But she just like could not seem to wrap her head around the fact that in Budapest you can't just park a car and walk into a place and get pizza. Uh -huh. <laughs> like New York, why not? Cause that's not New York, it's Budapest. She just like, I knew what she, she just really wanted a pizza slice. And even if you found pizza in Budapest, it's, you know, Hungarian pizza. That's too wow. good. So <laughs> wait, are we talking? Oh, wow. Uh, that's so great. I just know, wait, wait, is Labor Day the 7th or the 14th? It's the 14th. The 7th. The 7th. It's the 7th? No, it's, hold on, wait a second. Wait, I don't I think know. so. Wait a second. I'm like, whatever Google Calendar tells me. Uh, yeah, it's the 7th. The 7th, right? Yeah, it's the 7th. Why do my students make me, I can't remember what happened. They're telling me, like, Labor Day 2020. Your students are telling you it's the 14th. They're just hoping they can get out of two classes. They're like, if we don't have class on the 7th, but we Definitely make her think it's the 14th. It. Okay, so, um, all right. So, uh, we are gonna put something on the calendar. Oh, I did kind of want to ask, like, what's the, the VW story for chapter nine? Can you just give me the brief outline of where it's going? like? I saw, I read the paragraph, but like the story it, is. Yeah, it, it's done. There's okay. Been, it's not going anywhere. It's staying right where it is. No, no, I know that it's staying what it is. What but is like, the story? Like, can you just flesh it out for me so I have a better understanding of what's happening in it? Like, what's the story? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I, I think I'm understanding. I just have I mean, to say from like the paragraph, which is just like, it's about life. It's about love. It's about, you know, <laughs> Oh, your paragraph where you're like, I wanted a boyfriend and a car. I had three I dreams. Everything. And it's about trouble three dreams and a and dollar in my pocket. You know, just like, yes, this, this sounds like conversion. <laughs> oh yeah. The, <laughs> where we were just discussing her story and then we're like, I don't know, what can we make it about? A uh, conversion, a uh, failing, uh, <laughs> that wasn't clear it. enough. The rambling thoughts. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, that's, that's fine with me if you don't know where you're going with it. Your so anecdote can... from oh, Carmen Gia to the vote to the Gulf. Oh, it's to be determined. Okay. It, it looks like it has to be in in order for it to be related to funnels or conversion. It needs to be about me going through changes in my life that had to do with like, you know, that when you're 16, you know, like. So, you know, you're at a certain place in your life, you have these expectations and then life, life doesn't go as planned, but it can't be exactly like a life go, doesn't go as planned story because we have those again in, with my great grandpa and my grandpa. So yeah, um, I think it's more about me, just like this idea of uh, that I, you know, I don't know, you know, like bad shit happened and I just kept on going and, um, it's also this like failure and learning from fail, like how important it is to fail at things, right? And yeah. then like tweaking things, adjusting your goals. I wonder if that's again the orient, because the, these stories, even though they don't seem like they're overly related, like they're orientation moments, right? Like spatially for yeah. the leader. 
And so I wonder if that's also kind of like the tie in here of, um, you know, like, again, we'll use chapter 11, the denouement as example, like we're talking about your grandfather and it really goes into his whole life story, but then we pull it back by saying like, you know, you can't expect anything of life. And the same thing is true, you know, of like here, even if you go through the methodology, there you are. And so kind of like, maybe that's one of those moments as well. Anyway, that's just me ideating right there. <laughs> So wait, what was that? What was the takeaway from that? that the takeaway is that that's food for thought for Sarah when she goes for full edit. <laughs> wait, Jessica, what did Sarah just say? I'm trying to uh, about pulling it back at the end, relating it back. Something yeah, else. just because again, like the the when it comes to like you're a filmmaker, is like you you do a wide let and shot, and then you have to bring it back closer to help people understand why you went wide, right? I mean, I'm open to ideas here. We, you know, like, all I, all we know is that it starts and ends with me having a VW, which is a nice thing because the two chapters are mostly about VW. Yeah. Um, cool with that. So, so there's a personal relation to it, but it, it also can give some information that people didn't know before, like that I changed my name, that. I, I could focus on the shitty things that happened in my life um, when I was going to up to NYU um, that, you know, because there was an NYU story up, or up through NYU yeah. um, and just focus on that period of my life or it could go all the way along and, and because it has me uh, ha ending up with uh, back in you know with another vw I, I i i'm open to ideas i really don't know yeah i think it again goes to like the conversation from seven of nine of like there's something illustrative of pulling it back to help orient the reader i'm just not sure which one it is yet like the story the story is fine i'm totally okay with you doing that it's just how do we pull it back in for that transition so that it it works out well cool i don't well, know the answer yet <laughs> well do you know if the story should go you have no ideas on if it should be one about me that just goes from age 16 or talks about we have two childhood stuff because they talk about my parents like i kind of want to we, we do it, I, I guess what go ahead sorry should it be 16 through 55 or should it be 16 through 24. so what i would recommend is that if you and Jessica take a moment either this week or next week for, you know, turn on the recorder, Jessica, and just discuss the story, like verbally, orally tell it. And then we have some raw information that we can just put through a transcription system and then we can see how the story can be shaped or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can just ask me a bunch of questions about my life, Jessica, and we'll yeah, you just start telling me stories. I'll just ask you all kinds of questions like yeah. I do with my friends, my parents, my grandparents. Just tell and, me more. Yeah, and then what that does, and Jamie, you know this because this is what we did a lot in the first edition is like when I have some material to work with, then I can help make some recommendations about like how we can take that material and shape it into the space that we want it to go into. I know, it's definitely jamming something in there, but... Yeah, yeah one like of the things the we struggled with was... was uh, like, we were trying to figure out when we first started writing like nine and now obviously with 10 like which anecdotes went where because like there was the great grandfather story or there was like the Carmen Gia story so originally I think Jamie you planned on putting this in the digital transformation chapter and it was going to be the story of transformation mm -hmm. but then it was like okay well if we have these two stories like the great grandpa Benjamin story like fits better in chapter 10 potentially and so I think that's why this this story kind of is was a little bit homeless and <laughs> misplaced. So we were like trying to figure out like, okay, what really is it in this story that relates to these, you know, what is that, that zoom in point that we can tie it into what's going on in this chapter. And that's where we were struggling. Yeah. And it's <laughs> on me because I ran out of dead ancestors, you know? Yeah. How could you, Jamie? <laughs> Couldn't find anybody else. Ugh. But definitely like just, if we have material to work with, then we can start, we have the clay to start shaping and seeing what that should be. And that also might be a way to help us kind of figure out these other comments that at least I, I'm 
instinctually kind of leaning towards of like, what is the, how do we help use these stories to illustrate the points? Um, and I mean, like, as I said, like, I don't, I think that all the technical information there is correct. And I know that Jamie's putting in all correct and validated information and stories. And, and gosh, I'm thinking of the Grandpa Benjamin story and the uh, one in the denouement, like, you went and interviewed relatives and you did a lot of work to get those paragraphs. <laughs> so. I know, I know. That's why I'm worried about the story. Uh, doing one from scratch, but uh, no, I mean, I know it'll come. It, it, I don't have to research it. It's in my head, you know. Exactly. Just, I'd say, like you. I mean, you've done improv and stuff. Like, just start. You know, just tell Jessica the story, whatever it is, and let's just have it so that way we can put it in the blank, the space, and then we can see how the spaces edges and the story edges are working, and then we start shaping. And maybe it should just be a short story at this point. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be, you know, 20. The Benjamin story is going to, is like, I feel like it's like 20 paragraphs or where, is that in the, is that in here? Do you know where that's at? It's, um, no, it's, I, uh, unless we put it in the resources folder, but I'm pretty sure it's on your computer somewhere. I yeah. thought we moved it, um, Yeah, I think you have it as like a PDF or something somewhere in your computer. I don't see it here in this folder. Really? Yeah, it's but yeah, it's a little long. It's very long. Yeah. Um, it's not necessary. I think in this one, it's just a mention. So it's not at the bottom of 10 right now. I don't think so. And no matter what, I think at the end, when no. you complete the storytelling, um, do some ideation as to the lessons learned, because that's one of the main ways that you pull the lens back to what you're supposed to be taking from this as you move into like the actual chapter. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, let's get something on the calendar. Um, I'm gonna not freak out, everything's fine, right? If you're freaked out, then you're in a normal state. It's great. <laughs> we got this. It'll be fine. We got this. Okay, so, uh, Sarah, we're going to hand you, uh, Jessica, we're going to get you some shit tomorrow, right, in the day, which was Wednesday 6, right, Jessica? Is that right? Yes. And then Monday, excuse me, next week, we need to meet about, right? So Tuesday, you and Jessica are going to go through Chapter 7 through 9 my comments. Okay, I'll just remind that. Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then... And then depending on how you go through the comments, or actually no matter what, let's later that week, let's have a conversation. Anyway, so Wednesday, Thursday, let's just put something on there so it's there. Okay. Um, when are you both usually working? Are you meeting daily at this point? Tuesday through Friday from 1 to 4.30. And then I often slip and get busy and it goes to 1.30 or to 2 to 5.30, but in, in the afternoons. Okay. And then next so, week I have a dentist appointment in the Valley, so that's screwing up one afternoon. So I'm, I'm fine Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday or Thursday next week meeting somewhere in this time to go over to have a conversation and check in with you guys, whether it's chapter seven through nine comments or me starting to bring chapter one through six comments. All right, how about like 12 o'clock on Thursday? Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica, we, we're gonna have basically the same schedule next week, uh, except that Thursday we need to start earlier. Yeah, so, next okay. week was, yeah. Thursday, yeah, Thursday you have a doctor's appointment. Wednesday morning I have a dentist appointment, but other than that. Alright, uh, so we'll do a, what, what would you call this? It's a structural discussion or, Sarah? Does it matter? Like, yeah, I'm like, what is this? Um, this is, yeah, just UX strategy, the, your, your book team. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> team, meeting. team meeting, all hands. Yeah. 
Okay, and uh, that, and it, we said 12 o'clock, and at least 90 minutes, probably. Yeah, at least. Do you want to just do two hours to be safe? Yeah. Okay, I think it's looking good. All right. Let's get there, and then we'll probably need to set up some more stuff for the following week, but we'll have a better sense of what we need to do on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. once we've had a chance to look at your comments on 7, 8, and 9, and then we get to talk with you more, then we'll have a better idea. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. So we'll look at 4, 5, and 6 tomorrow, and we'll send it to you 1 through 6. All right, ladies. Thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. Great to see you, Sarah. Good to see you, too. I'll talk to you both later. Bye. 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 Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. It'll be fine. We'll be fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. I freaked out. There's like two versions of 7 through 9. We gotta Don't worry. That's, we're going to put it all together. Okay. We just need to go through four or five and six comments tomorrow and try to get rid of as much as we can. So should we take a break? Uh, take a break now. That's fine by me. I didn't eat lunch yet. All right. So, where are we now that Sarah gave us all that feedback? So I think we're just going to keep going with comments now. Yeah. Should we just go through four, five, and six? And ditch mobility because it's because it's too much other stuff going on. <laughs> okay, and then plus we, it would just be weird to actually write it ever, you know? Yeah, I know it would be weird. Okay, because it, it seems like we should continue to postpone it. Yeah, we did get some words in there. We did. That's more than we've done previously. So yeah. I call it a win. All right, so now we're gonna um, look at Eric's comments, you know, and um, I think the call that we do with him needs to be truncated. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is this? He said, strike this hyperbolic adds no value and you can't prove that it's true. How come I don't see the comments? Because it's loading or something? Yeah, it must be. What happens if you click on the text? Does the comment pop up for you? Ta-da. There you go. It's weird. I guess I was just loading. Um. Do you agree? I mean, I think it is important. Like, I do agree in that, like, we can't prove that pretty much everything has been attempted, but I mean, I think you already did some hedging here. We're saying, I hesitate to say that everything has been done, but pretty much everything has been attempted. But I think that it's still important because for people coming into this book that are like, I have the next Uber or whatever it is, like, you know, I think a lot of people think they have this great idea and if they could just, you know, get a team of developers to build it for them, we'd all make millions, you know? And so I think Reject. in these earlier chapters, like it's important to address that head on and be like, look, like somebody else has probably attempted it. It's not to say that like, it's impossible for you to do, but you need to be aware. Okay. Done. Um, next. You and your team might think that you're creating new, that your product, but how can you be sure? You and your team might think you're creating a new marketplace with your product, but how can you be sure that you're, how so can you- So he wants to replace that with, how can you be sure that your product is also creating a new market? I think that's a, a fine change. I would agree with that. It's a little bit cleaner the way he rewrote it.
I like that. Mm -hmm. um, mark a research if you're open to a DIY approach. Learning and doing this. Yeah. To be competitive, you need to know what's out there, what has worked, and this is why mixing the terms marketry and is a bit. It's not competitive. I mix. I interchange market research and competitive research. Mm -hmm. Uh. So, and competitors are in the marketplace. Your marketplace is the. <laughs> So what do you think? Keep going? Should I? Yeah. That's just a, a terminology. We have to decide if we want to be consistent and just make it all one thing or if we're fine with using both. Um, well, he's also make, making me confused. He's saying competitive analysis and I'm interchanging market and competitive research. I have found the most efficient way to do comprehensive competitive analysis is to collect. Okay, I agree with this one. Except we don't want to keep it highlighted, right? Delete. You want to get rid of treasure trove? I don't know. I like treasure trove. Valuable is boring. Okay. What if the reader asked me? I thought this is what this book is about. You know, somewhere remind. Huh? What? As relating to business strategy. Yeah. Did he forget that the framework of business strategy, that business strategy, a tenant of UX strategy? Well, I think now we did a better job, like since he made these comments, we did a better job in, what was that, chapter two or three, where we're talking about the, the tenants and how like business strategy being a part of this is like much more important. Okay. Uh, mixing the term market research and So do you want to just be using one of these terms? Well, first of all, I don't, inter I just, I've already said this three times. I don't mix up these two terms together. I just swap out market and competitive research. Mm -hmm. um, and this chapter is about conducting the research and chapter five is about conducting the analysis. Okay. Yeah. So we want to be calling things research in this chapter. Do we care if it's competitive research or market research? Are you okay with using those interchangeably? I, I am. Are you? Let's see what's competitive. Let's see if there's any real differences. Market research is the way in which product managers gather information about customer needs and market drivers. Competitive analysis is a subset of market research. Yeah, so I don't think there's a difference if you're saying competitive research or market research. Okay, so uh, What? All right. Um, too many words. Um, I'm not going to call. That's why conducting competitive research on the on the. I'm not going to say that's why conducting competitive research on the competition is a crucial. Yeah. Component. So no, I, I think we disregard it. I could say that's why. Uh, conducting 
research or researching the competition is a crucial component of the strategy. How about that? Just take out this word. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, and then I'll just close this out. Do we need to say conducting? Does that sound weird? Conducting research? That sounds like it makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That's why conducting research on the competition is a crucial component of business strategy. Yeah. All right. Um, on we go. Uh, and then we hear, I found the most efficient way to do a comprehensive competitive analysis to collect all the data. So here it, it is being swapped out. But we're talking about analysis, the most way to do cross comparison. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. What's, it, what's this highlighted for? Is it done? Yeah, just reject it there. Something here. No. Okay. So, um, okay. I'm go assuming this is a uh, use current research that was conducted in 2020 on the Airbnb for weddings value proposition for explanation and sample data. So he thinks that that's your note to self, reminding yourself that you need to discuss that. Uh, do you think it doesn't need to be there, that sentence? Let's see, figure 4.3 depicts an example of a spreadsheet that I created using Google Documents specifically for conducting competitive research. I think maybe we can just say figure 4.3 depicts, like maybe we can get something in about this, like explain what is in the figure without saying I'm going to use current research that was conducted. Or we can just say it includes or it shows research that was conducted in 2020. Sounds good. So need to, is it okay for a, that's a sheriff thing. I want to fix it. Okay. Um, as I I've included it, refer to on assessing the, He's just pointing out you used competitive analysis here. That's what we call the tool. This greedy show above in 4.3 doesn't really depict any qualitative data that references excellence versus mediocrity. I don't think this is a good place to get into that. They're not ready for it. No. No? I don't think so. I mean, do you want to make a backup of this with this comments to debate them back and forth or? No, because we can always access the comment history if we really, really want to bring it back, but. Hmm? You can? Yeah. But like, it's still somewhere when I, if I ignore it. Yeah, if you like, up by the share button, there's that little comment icon. And if you click on that, yeah, it'll show you like. Got it. Yeah, everything that you've rejected, everything he wrote. Okay. Yeah. I guess he can see that too. All right. Um, okay. Trigger warning. This is Scott. Oh my gosh. When solid research is the input, solid analysis can be the output. Uh, trigger warning is just scatological. Uh, which is just a fancy word for the study of shit. The point I was trying to make is that you need to do solid research uh, in order to have solid, uh, uh, and 
if you do lame research. Yeah, the important part is this can. It's not that it is the output, it can be the output. After only a cursory examination. How about like if we said, it's only possible to do a solid analysis if you have solid research as the input. Like just emphasize the fact that what we're saying with this sentence is that it's possible to get solid okay. analysis, but only if you have solid research. Okay, so say goodbye. Okay, so here at the end of this adventure, you'll see that knowledge tr truly is power. Did you want to flip this sentence around or no? Oh, what's the problem? I was just saying, like, I think that he didn't pick up on the fact that it's possible to get solid analysis and maybe read it as with solid research, you get solid analysis. That's what he's saying. Like, that's not true. So what does he want to say? So I was suggesting we could say, uh, crap, how did I put it? Something like, you can only conduct a uh, solid analysis if you have solid research as the input. Like emphasize the fact that, right. yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was great. Happy to help. All right. So this, um, I used to say knowledge is power. You know, whatever. So there's there's great exceptions like Trump, you know. Yeah. But in the world of tech, uh, so you know what what's the thing like? Oh, wait, let's just act, let's just not research it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should just leave a comment for Sarah to see, like asking about this market research versus competitive. Like, is it really that confusing? I don't think I agree with this drive through. It'd be weird to just open this with your marketplace contains all your existing and future customers. I'm like, what is my market? <laughs> I don't know what my marketplace is. It's not, it's our distribution. You and your team create for deliver. It's like he doesn't want me to educate people on the basic principles of, of how they, you know, the internet is different from uh, one way mediums. Yeah. Well, it seems like from the comments that I've seen that he's like, wants to be like a little bit more like straightforward in, in his style where he's like, just say it, like cut out whatever background information, you know, that is not absolutely necessary to understand the concept. But I think some people appreciate that background, you know, instead of just being like, drop, here's a fact, dropped, here's another fact. Right. All right. Well, thank you for shopping. Okay. Um, oopsie. Oh, no. Okay. And then. Another special thing about why with why. So he wants to just cut out another special thing and say your marketplace contains. Are you good with that? 
Yeah. This is good. Yay. Yay, that's so easy. Here's another market research is not the same as competitive research. I feel like we can clear the comment here. Like we already pointed it out to Sarah up there. I don't think we need like this comment over and over and over again. We can just control F market research if we want to change it. Um, well, I'd love to just like decide if, if we want to go with market research or competitive. If you're saying it, are we talking about, in his mind, are we talking about market research or competitive research? I don't understand what the difference is, but maybe we should ask him what he sees the difference as. Okay. I'll look and see if I can find. Well, market research also includes, remember, competitive research is a subset of market research. Right. But just. I mean, we can just call it competitive research everywhere, I guess. Since that's what we're talking about specifically. It's helpful to get short. Uh, I'm trying to get him to say, like, it's helpful to get uh, specific, you know, uh, whatever. It's too late. Yeah, I would just leave it at that. Okay, um, is the audience retarded? Seriously, do you, people in the field, your chart need to be told this. Let's see, talk about Google is the most popular search engine has some very advanced search filters to find your, it also doesn't hurt to use other search, like Microsoft Bing to compare. The algorithms behind our search tools are, and so even the order of results can tell us something as we begin to gather data. Uh, I don't think we need to include a table of primary search engines with comparisons. Those like that's overkill. Yandex and like, come on. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think the only change I would say is obvious. You know, Google is obviously the most popular search engine and has some very pot. You know.
If I haven't heard of Yandex, I don't think, I think we can look yeah. at it. Um, so, uh, there's the market research again. Just wait. Yeah, that's his, that's the comment you already replied to. Okay, so, uh, So the next one is he just wants to say in the case of instead of for Airbnb for weddings. Should I add Google is clearly the most popular search in or obviously? I mean, I don't think that's going to pl uh, placate him. He just wants me to get rid of it. Cause yeah, I would just leave it. Okay. You're still not happy with the Google. I don't know. I just like, I, I mean, are they? I mean, we could say, fortunately, we live in a time where there are hundreds of web tools for doing effective market research. Colon, Google, Bing, Yandex, period. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever else I'm going to say. And then everyone's like, what's Yandex? And then like, we can just say the algorithms behind our search tools are very complex. So even that, like we can just cut out the explanation of Google and Bing and just list whatever, Google, Bing, Yahoo. Okay, I'm on Yandex. Uh, I'm going to search for Eric Swenson. That's not even him. Uh, I see. Okay. So what's the deal? Clearly Jamie Levy owns Jamie Levy, except for this dude. Um, Maybe he's also Jamie Levy. It looks, I don't see the big deal right now. It looks like very much the same. I don't get it. Yeah, I think so. it's just like people in other countries still use Google. <laughs> I thought so. Okay. I think it's uh, fine. And we're talking about Google later on in the chapter. Yeah. So, and we even got Logan. Right? Yeah. He's working with us to try to we keep Google in there. What do you think about taking this part out though? Just like shortening it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause maybe uh, that'll make it better if we're not like belaboring the point that like Google is popular and it, you know, has filtering and whatever else. We're just keeping it short. Fine. Define my competitors at first of my target audience. Okay. I mean, he is very good at doing competitive slash market slash competitive analysis. Mm -hmm. Uh, provide the name of this feature, Google predictive search. Oh. Can we just say, yeah. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, just put it there. Just say, as you type the keyword, Google predictive search displays the most popular permutations of that keyword. Thanks, Eric. That was easy. Um, ooh, we're just jamming now. Oh, he's going to talk about sock puppets again. Oh, God. You have a bit more here. Telling the reader to be very cautious is probably not enough. Is he talking about the quick tips or this paragraph before?
Um, yeah, if you can give me the sentences you think need adding, that would be useful. Otherwise, I have to save it for my next book. Call you X strategy for Eric Swanson. Kissy emoticon. Okay, um, what is this shit? Create? Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so much. No one's gonna set up a password manager with separate accounts for each tester and... I told that to him. He, he had these comments before. Do you know, even know what a, do you know what a sock puppet is? I had to research it when he talked about it before. No. What is a sock puppet? It's like, it, it's a fake, you know, like they put a sock over your hand and you're like, hi, Jessica, you yeah, know. Right. I get the concept of the sock puppet. I meant what, in this context, what is he using it as? It's, it's, a, it's an identity. It's a, it's a virtual fake identity. Ah, I see. So it could be a fake email address, which to me is more like you're creating an anonymous one. So to hide your own identity versus playing uh, catfishing games, trying to do bad, you know, ethically something screwed up. What is a problem? I did, and I'm pretty sure I told you so before. This is just too much for people. Like, I agree with what he's saying. Like, in a perfect world, if you were going to do this research, like, you would have, like, a password manager with separate accounts so everyone can access it. But, like, small startup teams aren't going to be like, quick, let's go out and, you know, sign up for a password manager account. We have competitive research to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like making it easier for like some UX designer who wants to start doing research and is just going to go crazy like using their own passwords and or making or having a million different ones. So here's an easy way. And the research is in top secret stuff. They're just researching like who sells the best black shoes. Yeah. Um, if they, I guess, uh, I'd be more interested to hear what actually the um, the technical reviewers say. Like if anybody says anything about that. Should we leave it for, I mean, Sarah's just gonna get all confused. A if you insist on a shared method, which I do, a better way to set this up would be through a password manager and separate accounts for each of you. What testers? Like the people on your team, is that what? I don't know. This is just like going to go over most people's heads anyways. You could say like create one global username and password for all the products in your audit or like use a, well, no, cause no, like no company just is like, oh yeah, we have this password manager. If you guys want to like go hack around on other sites and make these accounts, you can use it for that. I don't know. Like I get where he's coming from, but like nobody's going to do that. Yeah, I warned them here about creating anonymous profiles on social networking. That's yeah. Easy. Don't use personal information. Create, you know, this is like quick tips. It's yeah. Just, look, quick tips. Yep. All right. I'm sorry, Eric. I'm not. It's just that's a lot to get into. Like, I agree with him. It's just a lot to get into here. And most people aren't going to understand it. They're going to be like, oh my God, I can't do competitive research. There's all these things involved doing it. And that's not competitive research at all. Yeah. Okay. Here I wrote, and sometimes out, 
uh, Aller and then open corporate. <sighs> okay, who do you want to research? Mm. Uh, the knot? Yeah. Oh my God. Do not, not theater, not, oh my God. What? What? Wait, okay. I want to learn about the knot. Now I'm going to go to Crunchbase. And you know what's going to happen if I type in the mm -hmm. knot. I'm going to find information about the knot. Okay, so, um, do you think that we should include that one? No, I do not. Or we'll save that for the Eric's once in addition. Okay. Uh, online annual report for publicly traded company. No, not just for public trade, also for no profits, which are required by a lot of posts. Also for not, uh, I could add and nonprofits, but the idea here was that it was that we're competing in a market space that is for profit. Yeah. I mean, we can include it. It is true. Is it true? I don't know. Assuming it's true, I guess. I mean, who's researching nonprofits? The one that wants a really competitive nonprofit. They're going to beat out all the other nonprofits. Sure, why not? That's, is that how you spell nonprofit? Is that good? I don't know. Let me Google it. That's good enough. I'll fix it if it's not. That's how you spell it. So, so Facebook told you that? Yes, you your, your fans. <laughs> ah. So much, yeah. Yeah, I went on Facebook and I asked my fans. They were like, yeah. <laughs> Just a second. No, um, I Googled it and the internet in various places said nonprofits, all one word. I think I worked on this before you, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got together. We were working on chapter five is where it started. Okay, so I did this in Berlin so, so long ago. Is a loaded term. Unpack it. Do you simply mean the rich feature set or do you mean their network of affiliate partners? Uh, the latter. So wait, he's going back and forth between me explaining something like simple terms like ecosystem to me not explaining things. I know I'm being defensive, but. So. So he wants you to explain more about ecosystem. Well, it, it, which essentially hooks her into the knots ecosystem, which means I, just another word in this sense for funnel or world or whatever. Yeah. I, I could switch it into, how about funnel? Yeah, that works. That way it's alluding to what's to come many chapters yeah. from now anyways. Yeah, it's so exciting. It's even hooking, hooking her in. Let's her into the notch funnel. Okay. Okay. Read this ama the amazing book Hook by Nereal. Wow. We really doubled down. Yeah, we, we might need to tone down the other one. Uh, so maybe we don't need to have this footnote. Yeah, we maybe we just remove it here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do we mention... Does he have a footnote for his book later? We just can we remember that to have that, or do you want to paste that into um, nine? 
the footnote. We have a footnote for his book. We do? Okay. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Not disputing this, but you're putting these words into a static medium print and their customer review section might be improved any time. Well, that's what we said at the beginning. It's 2020 data. Yeah. Uh, that he wanted me to delete that line, right? And now it offers... Well, he thought it was your note to self. Right. It also has a poorly maintained customer review. Hi, Eric, if you're watching this. He could be insane enough to do it. Um, let's see. Uh, we do love we do love you, Eric. Uh, not just beating this, but you're putting these words. Uh, okay. I think everything in here obviously can change, right? We already set that, that up. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to read this. I'm sick of this chapter. I haven't seen it forever. Okay. Yep, that's true. Weird to me that they got bought by a small yeah. company. I'm confused. Good, but consider getting more focused on the OPSE at well. What what is that, Jessica? The operation security. <clears throat> so you know what that is, and I don't. Uh, yeah, I use my handy friend Google. Makes me sound really smart. Oh. <laughs> you yeah, know that Google's a, a popular search engine? I have heard that somewhere. I think I read it in a book or something. Did, did it help you? Yeah, immensely. I had I had never heard of Google prior to that point, so it was actually really like a game changer for me. <laughs> okay. It's getting tougher to do this work. Ethically, so consider updating your recommended trade craft for my comments above. Uh, yeah, that's still just talking about like using the password manager and, and all the other stuff. Yeah. I mean, we can add like a tip in that quick tip section. That's like, talk to your, I don't know. What would you have at a corporation, like a legal or something about like any, anything you need to be careful of? I mean, the thing I did very, uh, I spent quite a bit of time over Christmas in that lovely library in Berlin was look, researching every single article on market research and competitive research and making sure that anything anyone mentioned that was useful for researching products, digital product services was in here. Mm -hmm. so all the stuff he's mentioning is from his standpoint of doing competitive intelligence, which is something that he's into. And right. that's more top secrety, like yeah, less know. so. What features does the not have? Right. Yeah. It, it's we're we're showing how to find stuff that's readily available on the web. Yeah, we just want people to understand what other products are out there, not to cultivate any secret, unfairly obtained knowledge. Yeah. If you put an app out in the app store, it's not like your competitors couldn't download it and try it themselves, anyways. Okay. So. Uh, I think we're done with four. Isn't that amazing? Incredible. Okay, so um, you feel like you can handle five? Right now? Ooh, there's, there's moves. There's your favorite character, Michelle Levy. Um, I'm not going to feel beaten down. I feel, I feel a little beaten down. Because now you're getting all the feedback. Well, because you're literally just sitting there and reading, like, here are, like, a collection of all the things that people don't like about the book. No one's sitting around being like, wow, Jamie, the way you wrote this paragraph was incredible. You blew my mind. <laughs> it's just much easier to go through and be like, wait, that's not right. That's not right. But think about how quickly we did this chapter compared to the previous ones, you know? Obviously, okay. there was lots he did, like. Okay. Yeah, we're getting faster. Okay, so... Um... And one of my students already read chapter oh, one through three and said, uh, 
magically. I don't know how she read 62 pages. We only said them last night, but he said they were very well written. Oh, well. Okay. Um, five. Yeah. How many comments are there? He said he had fewer once it, like from five on. That's great. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get to five and six then. Possibly. Okay. Um, oh, man. Oh, boy. I feel like maybe we should just use a different word besides intelligence. Uh, wait, no, I don't want to. Okay, you mean for this? I was looking down this one. Um, here. What if we just replaced instead of? Why don't we replace this here, this with this? Mm -hmm. And then we... Two birds, one stone. I think he's right. It's stupid that I talk about that I got my definition from a book that's called Competitive Intelligence for Dummies. Yeah. Oh, look, here I even give, okay, all right. We could do another for more on this or something if he wanted on his other techniques. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right, uh, so what if I went and... If you want to swap the quotes and then supply for additional information, check out. Okay. Wait, no, I, I'm thinking... It's like, if I get rid of this one, am I going to lose it? If you get rid of that text right there? No. I just want to get rid of it being commented. I just want to, I want to make changes to it without losing the comment for this here. Oh, I think. Let's find out. Maybe if we. Yep, it killed no, it. Oh. Yeah, just undo. I did, it didn't do it. Right again. Okay. Here, uh, I'll just I'll just recomment his comment down here. Do you want to make two copies? So you have one text to edit, and I'll just make the comment on the second set. Right, so I take this whole paragraph and copy it, right? Yeah, just copy it, and then I'll, I'll make the comment on the part below. All right, cheers. Did you do it? Yeah. 
Where's the quote? The quote was in his comment above that. Um, huh? Just scroll up a little bit. That comment. If you say show more, that's where the quote is. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, can you see if you can find the source of it? Yeah, I'll look. Okay. Are an effort, ethical effort to collect, validate, and analyze it on it to produce actionable insight. Period. When combined with an internal, it should give you as a complete as possible. Of it. Can't find anywhere online where that quote came from, or any like books that he's written. I'll keep looking. Like if you just plop that quote into. Yeah, it didn't come up with anything. Yeah, I figured you did that. Um, what about even his name in LinkedIn? I mean, it seems like he's like a business professor or something like that. But I'll double check what he calls himself on LinkedIn. But we might just need to ask Eric where that came from. He's a partner at Clairvoyant Leadership and a, a faculty emeritus at Thunderbird School of Global Management. Can we just say as professor and is he an author? Is he a business oh. professor? Yeah. He is, or he was, he's a professor emeritus. But he's a partner at whatever this clairvoyant leadership LLC. Okay. Um. Ooh, he was also an intelligence analyst at the CIA. Whoa, that sounds way cooler. Yep. As, he worked there for almost 20 years. As former intelligence analyst. Analyst for the CIA. Can we say like as former CIA intelligence analyst and professor? Or as professor and former intelligence analyst? I don't know. I don't think we need the professor. I think it's just cool enough. He's a former intelligence analyst. Yeah. Uh, I need help making this paragraph right. It's just a setup to the definition. I'll look at the next thing. I think that's good. We just need a source for wherever it came from. 
Okay, here I got an idea. Um, here's the first sentence of that paragraph. Okay, then we go on this one, and we just need to get rid of Underwood and just say, um, also be aware that there are numerous There, how's that? Oh no, then, wait. Where wait, un undo that. And let me just copy this text from his quote again. Okay. Okay, now you can delete it. Okay, and then this drawing, I think I got from that book, but we redid the artwork and I don't think, do you think it's useful to see this, that it's a four step process? No. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. No, like it's more interesting to me to like hear about what it is and think about the fact that there's like ethical and unethical ways of doing it. I don't really need, like I'm not about to get, I don't know. I don't really know what I get from that image. I guess it's like the part that I don't, it's like we gather, which is searching, we analyze it, then we execute on the strategy and then we plan for the next step. Yeah, but we don't really talk about those steps and then it also doesn't help that right underneath it's the four steps to a competitive analysis and market opportunities okay it's gone can you put the steve blank thing footnote off the steve blank quote that i want to change yeah uh, for for war and you're gonna be so excited to change all the graphics in this one. Oh yeah the are now off um what is this consider Check in rescue, getting it right. All right, so what do you want me to do with this? With what? This extra comment? Yeah. I think we can clear his comment from above. We use that quote now, unless you want to reply and ask him where that quote came from. Okay. Um, okay, so um, the question is just do we want to say, because at the end of the paragraph we say for more on this, check out SCIP Code of Ethics. Do we also want to reference whatever this competitive intelligence book is? I'm sorry, I was fixing something else. Go ahead. Uh, at the end of the paragraph, we say, for more on this, check the SCIP Code of Ethics. Do we yeah. want to also say, and this book? Sure. What do you think? This book that we've never looked at, but I'm too lazy to even click on the link? Yeah, that one. Or we can just ignore it. It's fine. Up to you. Got three five-star ratings. Come on. Yeah, hey. maybe not. Unless we're willing to read it ourselves, I don't think we should include it. Uh, it's an established discipline that focuses on giving businesses and nonprofits the advantage of staying fully informed about what the competitors are doing. Uh, uh, I don't 
think we need it. No, I don't think so either. Okay. All right. sure. Gone. Bye. Okay. Are you, uh, good. Are you tell with much tighter language than some of the previous. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Okay. Holy. Oh, no. Oh. Five whys. Huh? Wait, did I? I skipped over a lot of stuff, huh? Yeah. All right. Should we re adjourn tomorrow? Yeah, I think so. But I think we're in a good spot. We just have like a little bit more left to look at five. I definitely think that we can get through six. Way fewer comments than on the first chapters. So. Did you look at it? No, I just meant like so far, like between four and five. Oh, I mean, did you look at six? I wanted to see how how brutal it is. It can't be because it's not in his, he, he's not a storyboarder. He's, he does competitive intelligence gathering. So, you know I what I mean? I don't know if he's even, oh wait, who is that comment from? I don't know if he's actually looked at six yet. Oh yeah, here he pointed out where he left off. He's like halfway through the chapter and he hasn't made any comments yet. Um, okay, so I'm going to say, um, we are handing this chapter off to an editor tomorrow, uh, Friday, so if you can look at it before Friday 1 p.m. PST. I'll give him it 4 p.m. PST. That would be groovy. I don't expect it to be much of this. All right, so fine. Cool. Well, we'll just look at five then tomorrow, and then we'll check out six uh, if his comments are back. Great. Um, well, it's been a really exciting day. It has so much all over the place. I'm feeling good. Wow. I'm feeling good too. You didn't even have to take off your sweater, you know? I know. So cozy. Your AC must be working way more than mine. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Jessica. Of course. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.